grapes. Check this out. Hello, and welcome back to Youth Group Reunion Tour, the podcast that unpacks the Christian cultural touchstones that you grew up with in the 90s and in the 2000s. I'm your host, my name is Jared, and normally this is where my co-host, Mike, or Mikey B, if you're nasty, would introduce himself as well. Uh, Unfortunately, due to some unforeseen circumstances, I am having to record this special intro to this episode uh, by myself. Uh, Just some quick backstory uh, on this episode and why this intro is happening this way. Um, This episode was recorded a long time ago. Uh, It was one of the very first things that we recorded, and initially we saw this going as like, we recorded a section that was about a half hour long, and then we were going to watch the movie and then record a follow-up section that we anticipated to be, you know, a half hour, 45 minutes or something. Um, It ended up being two hours long. And so what we thought best to do is that 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 short uh, intro segment is kind of meandering and all over the place. And so we thought that maybe it would be best to release that as like a bonus episode or something down the line. Uh, And so we just wanted to get a... um, an actual intro for this episode because the episode, like the, the the discussion of the movie part, it just kind of starts with, well, we're back and now we're going to start talking about this. Um, but the, the discussion for today's episode is a, a Christian extreme sports movie, um, uh, from 2001. It's called extreme days. You may know it from the, the Toby Mac song that is the, um, the theme song of the movie, um, which is uh, pretty awesome, and you should go listen to it if you haven't. Um, but uh, Mike and I are, are you know, we're excited for you uh, to continue into movie March uh, and hear our discussion on Extreme Days. So with that, we'll cut to our past selves and, and get into this discussion. It's two hours long. Buckle up, but it's going to be a fun ride. All right, we are back. We have both we both just had the the delight of watching Extreme Days and we're ready to talk about it here. I have uh, I think five pages of notes. I don't know how many Mike has. I have my brain. Okay. I just, go by impressions. Okay. Okay. You've also seen it before. Mine is completely first impressions. All of right. Course. So first thing, the movie opens. It lists a bunch of companies I've never heard of before. Uh, most prominently truth soul armor, which is prominently placed on shirts and other things throughout the movie. It appears to be a, uh, a Christian extreme sports, uh, like apparel company still active today. Um, and it appears that they like, you know, bankrolled this movie and, uh, they've actually officially themselves have put this movie up online on YouTube. If you go to YouTube, where we watched this movie, the account is Truth Soul Armor that, that posted it, like their business account. They're like, here's this movie we made. Check it out. Truth Soul Armor reminds me of Armor Games. That was like a Flash game thing. Did you ever oh, play yeah, yeah, Armor yeah, yeah. Games? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. It's a lot of Stickman games. Yeah, yeah. Not, not super youth group appropriate, but I definitely <laughs> remember playing them. Yeah, well. Yeah, Truth Soul Armor. They, they, remember, they have all the shirts that say truth and yeah, things all like the, that on there. There's like... A bunch of people in the movie that, that have this uh, clothing brand that I've never seen on a real person ever. Yeah. You know what? Maybe it's a West Coast a West Coast Christian extreme sports thing, but you know what? This movie did a million dollars, so I'd say that's pretty good. Wait, it it made a million, or it cost a million to make? It cost five hundred thousand to make. Okay, and it made about a million. Oh. Hey, that's what IMDb that's, says. That's a success, right? I I'd mean, say I'd say that's great. I say that that I mean, with stats like I mean, that, why I, wouldn't they make ten? Also, I gotta imagine the amount of like advertising they put in this was not probably a lot, so it, it's probably like a a decent success for them. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, I'd say it's great. Yeah, uh, official stats IMDb cumulative worldwide gross one million forty seven thousand five hundred fifty three dollars. How much do you think it did in China? 
zero. Probably correct. <laughs> <laughs> had, to, had to check. All right. So you have this True Soul armor. They have it up for free on yeah. YouTube. What else did you notice okay, about this? So the, the, so the, the, the movie starts out uh, much like uh, the Ballad of Ricky Bobby with, with a fake quote. I guess it's not a quote, but it comes up and it says, the story you're about to see is true. Only the facts have been changed to make our journey more exciting than it really was. So, completely contradicts itself. Yeah, well, you know, this is... <laughs> the a... only thing that changed is the facts. <laughs> of course, the, the most important thing to yeah. change. But no, that was a gr- it was a great hook, you know, because yeah. you knew right away that yeah. this movie was not going to be a serious Christian movie. Yes. Like, it, you're kind of worried that like, oh no... This movie is is pretty meta. It, at certain points of it, we'll get to it when it happens, but there's... Like yeah. a real a real meta thing that happens late in the movie that's yeah. insane. Well, yeah. they did a great way of yeah. catching your attention, I think, because yeah. the the very first opening scene yeah. is basically like a war scene, right? Yeah. Like it's it's like um there's a, a James Bond movie from the I think it's a Timothy Dalton one where he's like skiing down the mountain, getting shot at, and then he like gets in a sub and makes out with a lady, which is like a pretty good opening to a movie. It's not that good, but it's. It's you it know gets your attention. it's the same yeah. general idea. So like they are snowboarding down uh down this mountain s- supposedly with paintball guns. The paintball guns do not have CO2 tanks or uh hoppers on them. For anyone that doesn't know, hoppers are like the thing you put on top of the gun that the paintballs sit in that give you stuff to shoot and then the CO2 tank is what makes you able to shoot. So they just have like like the gun but there's no way that it could be shooting anything. <laughs> did uh, you ever play paintball, by the yes, way? Yes, I did. Okay. I, I, I not only played paintball, I was a counselor and taught paintball at a Christian summer camp. Okay, wow. And wow, I Mr. Played, Big Flex. I played against a professional paint, two professional paintball players, got absolutely smoked. But uh, they And they let me play a game with the bob long intimidator it's the name of it it's the the rolls royce of paintball guns or at least it was in like 2005 or something and they had an angel or no a halo hopper which was like i could feed balls faster than i could shoot them and i think normally like when i would play i would use maybe you know 50 to 100 balls a game or something we were playing like speed ball if Mm -hmm. anyone knows what paintball is so basically it's like there's all these inflatables and you're like in a confined area. You can see where everyone is and you're trying to kind of like laser tag with paintballs or whatever. Right. I played, I played a game with the Bob Long Intimidator and this Halo Hover. And I think I used like 400 balls in like three minutes. Cause I was just like, it was like the last day of camp, but I had all this paint left. So I was just trying to blow through it as fast as possible. It was just like lighting people up. It was great. I, I'm laughing because I, I, I wasn't sure if you were serious or not. The name of the it's, gun. It's called the Bob Long Intimidator. Literally the yeah. Bob Long Intimidator. Yes. That wasn't a nickname. So, so that this is, a... No, this so the reason that Mike is laughing is that there was a pastor at our church named Bob Bob Long. And uh yeah, just just happened to be uh that there's apparently a famous uh, paintball guy named Bob Long and the gun's called the Bob Long Intimidator. That's amazing. I swear I'm not making this up. That's this is a crazy. real thing. Wow. I you know, I played paintball one time yeah. and it was on a retreat. Okay. And I think I remember uh, this retreat. You probably do. Yeah. Um it was a Tipman 98 custom. I didn't That's, have it. It's the AK47 yeah. of paintball gun. <laughs> <laughs> completely yeah. completely indestructible yep. and, and, and kind of Soviet looking it, yeah. yeah everyone has it yeah. right there's there's no crazy rails or anything it's just yeah. a, a a gun that fires as much as yeah. you can shoot best, yeah yeah no i had a, i had a fun time yeah. i played a couple times too with my my best friend yeah. he was real big into paintball i'm not sure which came first extreme days and yeah. the paintball guns or the paintball guns and extreme days yeah. but so you're saying he may have been influenced by this movie there's a lot of reasons yeah. I think we were subconsciously influenced by this movie. But one of the things that we never got to do was snowboard down a mountain yeah. shooting paintball guns. I'll tell you that I'm pretty sure unless you like – most ski resorts would not take kindly to that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I can only imagine the crossfire yeah. when ski, someone's going down yeah. the bunny slopes yeah. and they're getting pelted with yeah. paintballs. Yeah, people on the ski lifts yelling at me and stuff. Mm-hmm. One, of the, one of the most like – the the most like the you can feel completely powerless if you're skiing if you wipe out and someone's on a, on a 
<laughs> the chair lift above you and they yell yard sale at you. <laughs> For anyone that doesn't know, a yard sale is when it doesn't, I guess it wouldn't so much happen with snowboarding because it's like, it's like the bindings are on your feet. But when you're skiing, um, your, your boots can pop out of the bindings a lot easier. And if you wipe out and your skis and poles fly across the the hill as if they were being sold at a yard sale, people people on the ski lifts, if they're mean, so if they're teenagers, they'll yell yard sale at you. I've never heard of this. Okay. I've never been skiing or okay. snowboarding. Well, so I, I have no context. I, yeah, I went, my family skied a lot, so. Okay. Maybe so I, you were the one yelling yard sale hey, at people. Maybe once. <laughs> maybe once or twice. Hey, it, I, listen, I had it yelled at me, so someone else was getting it yelled at them. Yeah. I, I think one thing that the movie captures at, you know, bringing up yelling at people, yeah. <laughs> it, it definitely reminds me of being in youth group again, just yeah. because there's just like this attitude of like this group of guys yeah. who just run pack around. mentality. With, yeah. It was just a total pack mentality with like no real consequences or anything they just yeah anytime we were out somewhere for youth group we would always just be like you know you would be emboldened to do something dumb or yell something because you're like it's all right I, everyone <laughs> i have all these people with me right yeah what are they gonna do come after me and yeah. tell me i'm a loser no i have like 10 friends with me yeah. and a girl yeah How can and they all think it's cool that? yeah, yeah. No, so so yeah, I, I think that that is one thing it captured well is that that feeling of like being in a squad and doing goofy things and and stuff like that. So, so going continue on, the, everyone is wearing ski goggles because they're snowboarding, except for one person who is wearing swim goggles with, for no reason because everyone else has, as far as I can remember, actual like you know goggles that you would wear when you were snowing snowboarding or skiing and then this one dude just has swim goggles on was that the character who is the nerd with like the long hair and glasses his name is matt he's the weird one yeah Yeah, okay the the weird one yes yes the the highlight of the movie yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah um so anyway they so they're you know snowboarding down this this hill they've got paintball guns with no hoppers no co2 tanks Mm -hmm. um eventually one of them uh (laughs) comes up to like a cliff which like they they're snowboarding somewhere where there's a ton of powder. They're like they're spraying powder when they're turning, and there's snow all over the trees. Suddenly, absolutely no snow on these rocks, as if for some reason it just didn't snow in this area. It could be a parting the Red Sea reference. Okay, that could be what they're trying to make. You know, Moses and parting feel, the Red Sea. I feel like that's not true, but maybe <laughs> um, there are a lot know. of you know yeah. the the one takeaway I guess from this movie after like. You know, this is just like the opening scene, yes, right? Yeah. And it's just so interesting to me, like if you haven't seen this, that they really, it really did feel like they were trying to, I don't want to say subliminally message you, yeah. but like the Christian themes in there, like we're almost like dog whistle Christian let me, themes. Let me tell you, the Christian, the Christian content of this movie consists of people wearing truth soul armor in the background of scenes <laughs> and about a 45 second scene uh maybe a halfway through the movie three-fourths of the way through there is that is that fair you say yeah that's that's what i mean yeah. it's like you, you wouldn't know it was a christian movie yeah. if you're just watching yeah. this you'd be like this is a really dumb extreme yeah. sports movie yes. but like if you're a youth group you'd be like that's bod that's yeah. project 86 yeah. that's pax 217 that's switchfoot yeah. like that's the Newsboys. None, none of these bands include. Well, maybe the Newsboys and what was the P.O.D. All of those yeah. bands were in Project there. Project 86. Yes, they, they're not on the soundtrack, but they had a song in there. What? what yes, did they I did. That? I got to go find it now. I'm going to have to stop this. Okay. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it later. We'll I discuss. promise you it's okay. in there. Okay. Okay. I believe you. Um, all right. So continuing on with the plot of the movie. So um, they, are, they are just about to introduce who all these people are. All of the characters' names are in lowercase letters because apparently they're too good for capital letters. Of course. So um, let's see. The main character or the person who's narrating, I guess he's not really the main character. His name is Will, I think. Does Mm -hmm. that sound right? All right. So then he's the little brother. And then his big brother, which is arguably the main character, is named Brian. Mm -hmm. And then they have their, their friends are Corey and Matt. Uh, and Matt is, um, the really weird one that we talked about. He's, he's the nerd. He's, yeah. He's like 
really, really strange. He's like the random one, right? And then Corey is the one that's like, he's like supposed to be hard, I guess. I mean, would you say that? Yeah. Like, you know, then by hard, I mean like tough or right. like, you know, he's like, you know, he's BA. <laughs> um, so anyway, they, so they get introduced and then it goes into like, uh, the backstory of how they all met or whatever and like why they're in this situation that they're about to get into. So they're doing like so, the classic film yeah, look. It's, and the it's a real, um, yeah, it's the, uh, like real, like wonder years yeah. type of like thing that's going on, which I just want to say who is filming that? Because at one point, so their dad was like a door to door salesman or whatever, right? At one point they're showing, supposedly this is on film, right? They're right. in someone's house. The dad is giving a presentation and both of the sons are next to him. And the person who is being presented to is there. So who is filming this? Is it the mom? And if so, why did the mom just like, I'm going to come into this house and I'm going to film this presentation of my husband trying to sell you a vacuum cleaner while my son's like put each other in a headlock like who is filming this again extreme days to real life yeah i uh, understand the pain of the dad having to sell vacuum cleaners door to door i did that for a couple days for a couple days (laughs) with drew (laughs) yeah but it did happen so this is another part of like how a lot of these things weirdly (laughs) influenced i think subconsciously okay you know but anyways i i don't know who's filming that but they they tried to set up like the dad as like this uh, he's he's business like man. a yeah he's like a real like um sad sack where he's yeah. like where they're like <laughs> he was an off he was an awful businessman and he was never home it's right. basically like he ne- was never there to love us and also he was bad at his job he got the worst yeah. of both worlds yeah exactly <laughs> so we weren't rich or loved <laughs> <laughs> and uh, terrible trade the other the other like completely they say. Uh, um, without I'm not trying to exaggerate they say like you know we're the brothers we had an older sister they introduce her immediately say that she died why introduce her why introduce her she's never mentioned again she's she's mentioned in one sentence in like an hour from now they're gonna mention that's her. right yeah. they, they, so they just totally they, killed they her put, off like they don't need the sister they don't they they it's for no reason they're like you know I'm I'm Will. This is Brian. This is our older sister. Let's. I wasn't Ashley. But let's say Ashley was like she died immediately. Immediately they kill her. She's she's on screen for three seconds, maybe. I'm, you know what had to <laughs> yeah. had. You know what had to happen, right? What, you know the story the, going on in their heads. Yeah. The story going on in the producer's head of Mister Truth Soul yeah. Armor the first. Yeah. He's saying, look. My niece is really asking to be in this movie. <laughs> like, I can't think of a way I could I'll possibly put her in. Sister, yeah. She could be in the movie for like three seconds, and yeah. then that's fine. Yeah. Do whatever you want with the character. <laughs> she just needs to be in it for a second. Make it work, production team. Make it work, writers, directors. Just do your thing. Um, that's what I think. Okay. That's, you know. So they so they introduce them, and then they say like. Eventually, their dad finally got enough money to make a down payment on a house or whatever uh, when they were like 12 or something. So they've just been homeless for 12 years or whatever. Or like transient, like gypsies traveling around, whatever. So uh, Corey is like their next door neighbor and Matt is like in the neighborhood or something like that. So that that's how they all meet or whatever. Matt gives off i have it written down matt has a real pete and pete vibe to him <laughs> in that he's just like really strange and random and like that's like his only divide he's like i'm gonna be weird or something yeah you know, everyone's known this kid at youth group or at your high school that was just like i'm gonna be weird to be weird yeah <laughs> Just to get I, some I can sort think of attention. Of a lot yeah. of people yeah. by that description, where yeah. being weird was a virtue in itself. Most me, of them were usually me, band, one right? of them. Yeah. I, uh, Let me just, I'll tell this story. One time when I was, I was, I just want to say, I was like in high school and this happened, and probably 17 or 18. Okay. And I decided that I was like, at this point, I had a girlfriend that went to another school. Cool. <laughs> okay. So She's she wasn't totally going to hear about it. And I was like, I was like, I don't care what anyone thinks about me. I think it would be funny if I pretended to do the thing from Billy Madison where I'm going to say it's cool to pee your pants. So I took like a butt. I would go up to like a water fountain and threw like a ton of water on like the crotch of my jeans. 
And at first I started out small and I just trying to get so, and no one was saying anything to me. And like, it, I suspect it may have been that I'm, I'm kind of intimidating. I'm, I'm six foot one. And I was probably like 220 pounds. And I was like on the football team and I had like a full beard and my voice is real deep. I'm not like mean or anything, but I suspect that people were like, I'm not going to say anything to that dude <laughs> about this. So as the day went on, I had to keep adding more and more water because no one was mentioning this. So at one point, so at first it was just like a little spot. And like by the middle of the day, like by lunch, it's like my entire like one leg is like a different color. Like it's like wet. <laughs> okay. And I'm like sitting in wet jeans and no one will, no one will be like, Hey, he peed his pants. And then I was going to be like, you ain't cool unless you pee your pants. And it just wasn't happening. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, so you do, I just go from, home in shame yeah. and towel so then, yourself off yeah, and be so like, then, this stinks. Just, I want to be clear. I didn't actually pee my pants. I yeah. was putting water on to give the effect of it. And eventually, no one said anything. And I was just like, all right, this is getting uncomfortable to sit in wet jeans. So I just got to cut my losses and get out of this. That's a one-way ticket to a UTI. I hope nothing bad happened. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine. Okay, th- yeah. that's no joke. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, uh, sorry for so, that. Time so, Matt, so, Matt so, anyway, you, so that's yeah, a Matt. That's thing. a thing that Matt would yeah, have done. I can anyway. see, see okay. that. Yeah. Yeah. In order to say a line from a movie that at that point was over 10 years old. <laughs> um, <clears throat> There's no Netflix or Hulu. They can watch it that night. You, know, okay. you had to have the VHS. We, well, see, we, we would watch stuff like that when we would go on like trips because the, the buses would all have VHS or right, DVDs right. or whatever. And Adam Sandler movies were like, everyone wanted to watch those. They were, you know. Do you get so, kind of an Adam Sandler ish vibe from from any of the characters? Like like he would fit in in that or no? I mean, I feel like not, like, not necessarily what I'll Adam is, Sandler, what but I'll like say, the supporting cast. Yeah, around I'll say him, that Matt know? has a real Rob Schneider vibe to him. I see. Like, that, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, can, I can see that. So yeah. that's what I mean. Like not just Adam a weird Sandler. guy that would show up in the background and yell something. Yeah, that seems <laughs> like that's right up Matt's territory. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. Um, there is, so they're, they're talking about the jobs that they had to try and get – save up money to go on this trip they're going to go on. So uh, Will is working at like a high-end like fashion store, like a men's warehouse type of thing maybe. And Brian is like painting uh, addresses on sidewalks and he has like a whole like – That's the side has, hustle. Yeah, he has a whole, a whole coterie of ne'er-do-wells that are like helping him and he like sells the business to one of them or something when he's leaving. Um, <clears throat> Corey is, is a lifeguard at a kiddie pool. So like specifically they say not – a like the pool is like – would you say – a foot and a half deep maybe yeah it's yeah. it's pretty small it's like basically yeah. enough room for one person yeah it like it, it reminds me of they have this technology it's, now yeah. but it didn't exist back then yeah. but like you know those pools that rich people will have where they swim and it's just like an infinity pool it's it's yeah. is that what it's called it's yeah. like it's like the the ones that like actually have the current that you swim against yeah, uh, yeah. is that infinity what well, i think it's like a swim I think that's spa. A type, i think that's yeah. a type of infinity pool that okay like that. yeah but basically what it is is it's like it's like a pool that an inflatable pool that you might have in your backyard, but it's concrete and at like a pool or something. Yeah. And he's in the like barely yeah. big enough for one person to stretch out all yeah. the way. And, and he's like it, he's wearing, um, you know, the old, he's listening to a CD player on like the old headphones that would like be completely impractical if you were a lifeguard. Cause they would get like wrecked so easily. Yeah. And, um, and you know, he gets into a fight with a child for splashing him. Yep. Uh, and then, then we get to the the crown jewel of of the jobs. Okay, it's Matt. He is a, a I believe he has been promoted to manager yes. of a of a restaurant. The restaurant is called the Turkish Sailor. Okay, there is no way that this restaurant would be allowed to exist in a movie that was made today. It is like, it's it's like a he's he's wearing a turban. That says manager on it. And it's some sort of like fast food Middle Eastern restaurant where they're selling like kebabs. And, they, they, I specifically yeah. remember Baba Ganoush Burger. Yeah. Which is, yes. sounds disgusting, yes. by the way. Like, 
they it, just, it's, it's they it, just picked a funny name and said Baba Ganoush. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is, yeah. but I bet you can make a burger out of it. Yeah, just you know, very timely in the wake of nine yeah. eleven, fresh in the zeitgeist of people's I think brains. This, I think this may have been pre nine eleven. It came out in two thousand one. 28th September 2001. So but they it would filmed have been it filmed before. Yes. Correct. So okay, uh, so this Pre- <laughs> this is the this is the bomb that healed America's wounds. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what America needed to we get. Need, we needed to heal by having yeah. stereotypically racist kids yeah. <laughs> wearing turbans. Um, okay, so. At one point, they're like, Matt doesn't want to leave his job. He's like, this is going to set me up for life. There is a flash forward to him wearing, to him being an old man wearing this turban. He has a gray, a long gray beard. It's insane. It, it is ridiculous. He, he thinks about it and he says, never mind. I don't want to do this. <laughs> so they're going on their trip. So their trip is like. <clears throat> they're in they, California, right? Yeah, so they, they. They, presumably they're in California, in Southern California somewhere. They are going to um, go like on a trip on the along the all along the West Coast, doing all kinds of extreme sports or whatever. There is a a montage of them packing. Matt packs his suitcase like he's a kid that won that uh, contest that Toys R Us would do, where you could go in and anything you could get in five minutes you could have. Where he's just like. Takes, puts his arm on a shelf and just drags it along and just throws <laughs> anything into it. Also, okay, so you you know the contest I'm talking about, yeah. right? Uh-huh. Here's what I want to know: the easiest thing to get when they would do those contests is like for big items like a bike, they would just put a tag because you couldn't actually get the bike. Mm-hmm. So all these idiot kids that were in this, they would like be like. Oh, I'm gonna try and find this toy that I actually want. Like, just grab all the bike tags, right. <laughs> get as many bikes as you can, and sell them. Yeah. Or go to the video games and just start swiping N64. That, that's what I would have done. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, all my friends are getting N64s. I'm getting as many N64s in here as I can. Yeah, you're gonna have an after school N64 getting, program. I'm, I'm getting as ma- as many uh, M rated games as possible. <laughs> Nickelodeon is not my mom, and I'm gonna get Perfect Dark. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why they did that. I remember that contest yeah. actually. And like it sounds like and like it's not that like Nickelodeon was like or Toys R Us was like you can't do it. It's just the kids were dumb. Yeah. They were just like and they'd only take one. They're like, I want this one toy. It's like just swipe as you could get as many carts as you could get. Just swipe literally take your hand, swipe them in, go get another cart, and like let's go. They probably counted on that dopamine yeah. overload to like paralyze yeah. you and that like bing bing wahoo yeah. sounds of yeah. you know Mario in the background would just be yeah. like, whoa, hold if on. I, if, I'm telling you, if I was there, I would uh, I would have bankrupted Toys R Us sooner. <laughs> yeah, that's why they're not around anymore. <laughs> Too many of these contests. <laughs> now, that's, uh, what, what does a kid need to pack anyways? I mean, yeah. like, it's not like he's going on a bit. He needs to pit pack his suit yeah. and his, yeah. you know, I, I get that they, like, do 10 different extreme sports. Yeah. So they need to bring, like, a snowboard. They would be the worst. So, Can you imagine yeah. being in line at the TSA nowadays? Yeah. It had to have been pre-TSA. Yeah. Oh, I guess well, yeah, drones, yeah, yeah, so it yeah, didn't yeah, matter, yeah. but... Yeah. You know, can you just imagine like unloading your bags like one by one and be like, okay, here's my skis. Here's my snowboard. Here's my my surfboard. Here's my skateboard. (laughs) Here's my weird luge thing that they do. Here's my roller skates. So they, while they're packing, Corey has a snowboard that has no bindings on it. So he was a poser. So yeah, basically what what I'm imagining happened is they, they just like bought a snowboard, didn't put bindings on it and then like returned it or something or like what, or basically like for anyone that doesn't know, um, when you buy a snowboard or like a skateboard or whatever, like you buy the board itself and it doesn't have any of like the bindings, the trucks or whatever that you need on it to be able to actually use it. So he essentially has a board that's completely unusable because it has no bindings on it. <laughs> Um, maybe he's just using it as a weapon to hit people over the head with. Um, maybe maybe he's going to pay to get it bound later. Who knows? (laughs) Um, so they, uh, someone says the line for the love of donuts, let's go. Uh, which I thought was pretty funny. That seems like a Matt line. I'm not sure, but uh, if I had to guess, that's who I'm attributing it to. Do you think they like sat down and wrote that line, or was that improvised? Like in, 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 in the writing room, do you think I, some some like boomer dad was like, "What do the kids say?" I I feel like it was like it had to have been written because I feel like they were like, 
Let's cuss here. Wait, we can't. Okay, how about donuts? Donuts are a funny food. Let's do that. Um, it 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 is. It, it's yeah. not like a dub or anything, yeah. right? It's, 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 it's as far it, as I can tell. It's like he he says it. Like he's like they're trying to pack, and he's like, "Come on, let's go." Yeah, for it the seems love like of donuts. with the car, and yeah. he says like, "For the love of donuts, let's yeah. go." All right. So first up on the trip, they're going to Mexico to hit some some sick waves. Um, to uh to shred the gnar. I don't know if they say that, but it sounds like something they would have said. They're about to uh, get so pitted. Okay, so Opa. the uh here's here's the the they're talking about how intense the waves are. Here's a great quote from Will. He says the waves are as fierce and unpredictable as your girlfriend after you say you just want to be friends. Um, is there more yeah, uh, is there a, a bigger youth group love sentiment than that that your girlfriend says she just wants to be friends. Like, that's so sad. And and at the moment, every yeah. teenage boy can totally relate to that fierce and unpredictability. Hey, Reliant K, we got to get those it's mood rings. Just like Reliant K. Get those K. mood rings out here. Um, there is a, a surf footage montage that is clearly not the actors or even body doubles. And it is at least... 20 to 30 years older than the rest of the movie. So they're they're taking footage for like the 70s. Yeah. And and it's like it's clearly like stock footage. It's not like they got the actor or a body double pretending to be the actor to surf. Right. They're there's on like, site in Mexico at the yeah. beach or whatever. I mean, it, there's like like there are people that are like that person is clearly Hawaiian and all of these dudes except for Corey are white. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's like um yeah it's just it's just stock footage of people surfing and the 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 quality of the video is like it is clear that this is from like the golden age of surfing and it's not like it's not like they got like you know kelly slater or like some you know the only surfer i know uh <laughs> and that girl that got her arm bit off by a yes. shark um we should the, do that we should do that one was soul that? soul surfer soul know. surfer yeah. whatever um yeah so there's just like a bunch of they're like hey what's free or cheap all right that's them surfing there's no stock footage website you'd have to go to there's probably some database like yeah. you said of like the the classic 1970s yeah. surfer yeah, beach boy yeah <laughs> surfing usa yeah. honestly i i have i don't have the tally of the time but it just feels like this movie like to describe it to mm-hmm. stepping back for a second it's probably a third of stock footage like that. I wouldn't say go that high, but it is a very it's, high number. It, like, I'll say every every new yeah, scene, yeah. there is like an extreme sport. Yes. I have, right? I have, and they, and they I have them all the listed. Oh, yes. right, okay. Um, I'll say conservatively, ten minutes of the film is stock footage. Yeah, at least that's fair. Yeah, yes. there's always a scene of yeah. extremeness, whether it's yes. snowboarding, skateboarding, and this one was surfing. Um, okay, so then. Then uh, there's the great joke. Um, they're they're in a bar, and it's implied that they're taking shots of tequila. Surprise! It's hot sauce. Um, someone, uh, I believe it's Matt, drinks the hot sauce, and it's the joke is he doesn't think it's hot at all. He's like, it's fine, uh, which lasts for about ten seconds, and then he runs over and like puts his mouth on the spigot, and someone yells, "Don't drink the water!" Great joke, Montezuma's revenge. Um, <clears throat> So here, here's uh, life imitating art. Yeah. Um, the Drew's very first semester yeah. when he was in college. Yeah. Him and his friends, they took a road trip from Chicago yeah. to Tijuana, Mexico. Wow. I didn't really put two and two together, but then I realized that, like, I don't know, it might be one of the subconscious things that, uh, you know, <laughs> we didn't think about. Now, I don't know if they did the hot sauce yeah. challenge, but yeah, it was kind of weird. Yeah. Um. For, for some reason, Matt is wearing two pairs of glasses, and both of them are tinted yellow. <laughs> Were they? Because, Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. 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 Is it because he's colorblind and like they're his like colorblind tinted I couldn't, glasses? Couldn't tell you. Like they're, the Jake Paul, like yeah. he's going to see the rainbow for the first time. I, no, I just know that they were both tinted yellow, like you know, just cool, different like, shades like of yellow. cool guy glasses at that time. But he's wearing two of them. <laughs> Whatever. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, Okay, so earlier they um, – when they were like describing like the dynamic of the characters, they talk about um, Corey's grandpa, uh, Grandpa G, is like 
he inspired them to do extreme stuff and like would encourage them to do like go off jumps and do stuff. He would do it with them. All right. So supposedly they're all super close with Corey's grandpa. That is what they have told us. They get a call. Corey's stepdad calls him. He's like, Hey, your grandpa died. He left you an inheritance. You got to go to Washington or whatever to get it. He then says, I haven't seen my grandpa in six years. Your grandpa is like, first of all, he's rich, so able to travel because he has come right. to see you. And, and and you're all supposedly super close with him. You're an adult at this point because right. they they say that they've they've all – no, there's the joke that um, – so Corey, uh, Matt, and Brian all took four years to graduate community college. And Will only took two years, and they all think that he's super smart, and he didn't have the heart to tell them it's only supposed to take two years. <laughs> um, anyway, so they they all are presumably at least 22 oh, years yeah. old. At least, like, presuming they went from 18, four years, they're 22, at least. So there's no reason that you couldn't go see your grandpa, or that he's rich enough, right. and you couldn't say, like, hey, fly me out to see whatever. Right. So you're super no close Chris, with No Christmas, yes. or... Yeah. And birthdays. Yeah, so hasn't seen him in six years. Um, and, and all of his friends are like, Hey, don't go to your grandpa's funeral. That's basically what they tell him. They're like, we know that you were super close with him and we all loved him and know him, but stay here and surf with us. Yeah. You know, that, that was one of the things that I noticed too, that I honestly think there was some of the worst acting in the movie yeah. was in that part because it was supposed to, they weren't sure whether it was supposed to be kind of like a tender scene yeah. or like a funny scene. Yeah. And, you know, he's like, dude, my grandpa just died. And, and, and look like literally what you just said. Yeah. He's like, bro, come on, bro. Yeah. We're going to have to give up our trip, bro. Yeah. And he's like, no, nah, dude, grandpa G was, he was yeah. cool, man. And then they, then they find out that like, he's, you know, supposedly left him this huge inheritance and they're like, Hey, what if we all go? And then by the time we get there, we'll have enough money to, you know, get home or whatever. So they're like, all right, we're all now the the trip has changed. We're all going to Washington. Um, as they're driving home, they lose all of their surfboards, fall out in the middle of the highway. They do not care. They keep driving. They leave four surfboards in the middle of the freeway on an exit ramp and don't stop to get them. <laughs> hey, they're for, gonna be rich for that some reason. For some reason, they take a detour past their house, which is in a residential neighborhood, which means that they had to get off the freeway, <laughs> drive past their house. They don't stop. They don't say hi to their parents. They don't go to the they bathroom. Don't, they don't, they don't do say anything. like... All they do is drive past their parents' house, not stopping to say hi, get supplies, get new clothes, do laundry, whatever. They'd be like, we're going to get off the freeway drive through a residential neighborhood just to honk the horn at our parents, not do anything, and then keep going. <laughs> Maybe that's why they didn't see Grandpa G very much. They just drove past his house. Yeah, they, Spoiler, <laughs> little plot twist, Grandpa G was right next door the whole time, and they were too <laughs> awkward to get out of their car. <laughs> yeah, I haven't oh, seen him in six God. years, because, you know, we just drive past yeah. and honk. <laughs> um, all right, so they're they're driving at this point they're you know they're taking turns driving matt is driving now matt almost runs down a homeless man and <laughs> ruins his livelihood and none of them care about it or even acknowledge that it happens he <laughs> drives full blast into a homeless man's shopping cart full of cans completely destroys it almost kills this guy and then they're just like well let's get gas <laughs> no one no one in this you know supposedly christian movie they don't they don't apologize to him they don't give him a few bucks. They don't even say, I can't believe you almost killed that person. And now, look, to be fair, there's a little bit of a character arc there. And I didn't really think about that okay. until you brought that up. Because remember, um, later in the movie, uh -huh. Brian, when they're at the grocery store, oh, yeah, he sees yeah. those homeless people okay. in front. Yeah, and then, yeah. We'll, you know, we can get to that one. But so stuff. that's what I'm saying. It's okay. Every Christian oh, movie has a redemption okay. story. Okay. And I think that... I, I interpreted that differently, but we can talk yeah, about it. Yeah, I, I think the Lord was working on his heart is what okay. it was trying to show. So while they're there, uh, Brian sees uh, this hot babe and she's got this truck from the 50s. And she's like... 
hey, I need to get this truck fixed. And the mechanic is like, it's $2,000. She says, I only paid $1,500 for it. He's like, uh, tough luck. And so at this point, Brian, who has seen all this happen, says, now's my time to accost this woman. <laughs> so, And, he, and uh, so this is this is Jesse yeah. from the yes. movie poster yes. who we talked about earlier. Yes. I did confirm that story, by yes. the way, 100% yes. true. Yes. Too scandalous. Too salacious, even. And to, to describe yeah. Jesse... If you haven't seen the movie or seen the poster, to me she reminds me of like a cross between like like a Megan Fox and uh, the step, but without this, weird toe thumbs. Without yeah, without. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, Sorry, I suppose. I'm putting Megan Fox yeah. on blast. Okay, she she reminds me of like a cross between like she's supposed to be like a Megan Fox type of character, and she reminds a me Megan of, Fox Transformers type. Yeah, yeah. like the Megan yeah. Fox because yeah. you know she works on cars yeah. and like she's supposed yeah, to be yeah, like yeah. the tough girl yeah, yeah. that's like not afraid to get her hands dirty and hates being stereotyped, you yeah. know. And then also I get a little bit of like the 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 stepmom from a Parent Trap. Do you know, okay, you know yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. a little bit of that vibe yeah. where she can kind of be mean and yeah. like you know she's kind of hard yeah. in that way. And uh, so let me, I'm I'm looking at the poster here. Before we were just remembering it, I'm going to describe it exactly. So Jesse is dead center in the poster. Yep. she's got classic like early 2000s hair where it's like got blonde streak highlights through it or whatever. She is wearing a a. Sweater, a crew neck sweater, not even V neck, not with like it. It shows no cleavage. It's all the way up around around her throat. She has the sleeves are barely pushed up past the wrist, so it's like it's like completely. It's like as covered as you could be. Like well, especially you without know, wearing like a parka or something. She is like those are pretty you know. low rise jeans, and I detect a hint of belly button. If you. <laughs> Possibly. Are you, are you depending? Are you looking at the alternate cover or the DVD cover? I'm looking at the one on Wikipedia. Okay. So there's one. there's two here. Okay. I'll. I guess I'll. I can. Why don't you describe it then? Because I. I don't. We. Our. Uh, our mic situation is is tenuous at best, and I don't want to mess this up. Is Matt on the left or the right? Uh, Matt's on the left. Corey's on the right. Okay. Jesse's in the middle. So the DVD cover, which was, I I can't remember which one he had was the poster. Uh I I would imagine they're both similar. Yeah. But there's an alternate version of them in different poses where Matt's on the right. Uh Uh-huh. And she has like a millimeter of belly button exposed. Okay. So. Salacious. uh, I just want to like clarify that just in case, you know, you might stumble as you go look up this. Bounce your eyes. Yeah. You got to bounce the eyes really quick. So. Um, okay, so uh, th- they see this happen. Okay, so uh, Brian goes over to shoot his shot, and his his brother and his friend, so Will and Corey, are mocking him to themselves off in the background. She was like, she says something along the lines of like, uh, "I need a miracle," and Brian says, "Maybe I'm your miracle." Uh, again, very yeah. that's that's a Christian theme, yeah. right? Because Christians yeah. have miracles. Yeah. That's something so, only someone who is he was witnessing yeah. to her, perhaps yeah. missionary dating. <laughs> um, so then they, uh, so she starts walking away from him as she should. And uh, at this point, Matt had gone to the bathroom. He flings the door open with wild abandon, and it basically hits her. And they recognize each other. We come to find out that Matt and Jesse are cousins. And not only that, Matt is related to every single person at this gas station. And they're all cousins. And Jesse's cousin just refused to fix her car for a discount. He's got a business to run. Yeah. <laughs> I think they say that, don't he does, they? He he's says, like, I got yes, a business to run. Yeah, he says, yeah, he's like, he's like, come on, man. He's like, I got a business to run. Yeah. Um, they find out that Jesse needs to get to the University of Washington, I think. Uh, UW, I think they call it. Um, And they're like, okay, previously Brian had offered to give her a ride. Jesse correctly said, I will not get in a a car with strange men and and drive across several states. She calls him a psycho. You could be a psycho. (laughs) Correct. Correctly calls him that. And I think that's kind of another note where, to me, that's like very much in the same lines as that donut phrase. You know what I mean? Where it sounds like they maybe meant to say something but yeah. it sounds so stilted and awkward to <laughs> yeah. say like you could be a psycho yeah. when you know if you scratch that and you yeah. really get down to brass tacks yeah. of what you probably wanted to say yeah. you know you could be a pedophile you could yeah. be a rapist you yeah. could be a murderer like yeah. all those things it's yeah. like oh no you could be a psycho yeah. which is like 
the safest possible adjective yeah. you can say. I, I just yeah. noticed that as like a really stilted line in dialogue. There, uh, so at this point, she she reconsiders. She's like, all right, if my cousin's here, maybe this, I can do this. At this point, a really, really creepy thing happens. Matt is like standing behind her and like petting her hair. Like he like is putting his head, her his hand on the top of her head and like running it down her hair, petting her, which is a very strange thing for cousins to do. She yeah. is not bothered by it at all. She's just like, this is fine. <laughs> Doesn't care. He, he was just being, Matt was just being Matt again, you know? He was just trying to be yeah. cool. Um, so next, the ne- now it's time for another extreme sport. On their way, man, is it time to do some dirt biking. Once again, there is a montage of dirt bikes of random people doing an extreme sport. Um, it is very clear that it is not the people doing it because... The uniforms or whatever they're called that they are wearing are different colors than the ones that when they like, you know, go on to do the scene in than they are wearing. So like, listen, I understand that like maybe you like this would have been the easiest one because you can't see their faces. They're wearing helmets. Just get them the same color uniform and they would be like, okay, I can believe it was them. They can't even be bothered to do that. (laughs) First of all, too, like, you know, this this whole drive or this idea of a road trip, like this whole drive would have taken like maybe two days straight of driving. Yes. But like, it, it, it's it, like if they, you know, uh, if they stop and they're like, all right, we're going to do a day of dirt biking. And then they, they stop and they do another day of, you know, whatever they're doing at, at most, this is going to take them four days, maybe yeah. because you could drive. I'm pretty sure you could drive from Southern California to Washington in two days. I'm, I'm almost positive. You yes. Can. Um, so they, they're, I mean, they're really taking their time here. Um, so they do that while the, this is when like the, the main plot of the movie is starting to kick in. Uh, Jesse's like, uh, doing some sick heel clicker or something off screen or whatever. And Brian and Corey, uh, Brian and Corey make a bet on if Jesse is willing to go to second and a half base with Brian, uh, and it's unclear what they mean, but it's heavily implied that it is something along those lines that there's that Brian can convince her to <laughs> to that to make that happen. This scene made me cringe, yeah. maybe more than any other scene in the movie because I don't know what they're like. But by, by dancing around it, they yeah. just make it, it made even it worse. weirder. It was way worse. Yeah, they, if they would have just been like, "You can't date her, or you can't make out with her, or hold her hand, or whatever," it would have been way better than what they. What they seem to imply, <laughs> yeah. The the phrase the phrasing I remember, they were like, "I don't know, Brian. You need to get her to do something. Yeah, that she's afraid to do. Yeah, yeah. So, that she doesn't want you to. You can't do. get her to do that. And you can't yeah. get her to do that. Yeah, and she's never done it with anyone else. Yes, ever. Yes. Yeah, and it's like, uh, yeah. He's he's implying sec- sec- second <laughs> second yeah. and a half base at least. And if they would have just said like, "Dude, there's no way she'll date you," yes, that would have been you know yes. one line yes. easy fix. But it yes. like lingers on yeah. Corey saying those lines. It just yeah. it's I just shudder when I think about it because it's like, oh man, I can only imagine the, what my parents thought the movie, as they were watching this with me. The movie heavily implies that Brian would be willing to slip a roofie into someone's drink that he will not take no for an answer. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's like a, the which, message, which I don't think of. is like what they're trying, but like the way that they're wording things, that's what it seems like to me. Yeah. And, and, and the whole thing is about like persistence yeah. in a creepy way. Yeah. Right. And but that's, he's, that's going to Bill Cosby someone. Yeah. And, uh, they are. He, he, he actually, Brian reminds me of a, uh, Dennis from It's Always Sunny a little bit. Yeah. Uh, a uh, glorious golden god. Yeah, just kind of like that. Like <laughs> the a guy. Dennis method. You're saying he's trying to Dennis her. That's <laughs> he, what you're saying. He, he does. He tries to Dennis Jesse. Brian, Brian is trying to Dennis her. <laughs> yes, absolutely. He's like, hey, you want to go on a boat because of the implications? He, he, dem- he uh, demonstrates uh, value. Yeah. <laughs> what are the implications yeah. that's the funny part that the implications are the implications yeah. and they she he literally just implicated like you know <laughs> hey do you want her to get her do stuff because yeah. of the, she'll have to because the implications you know <laughs> like, i don't by know by the way yeah. have you ever seen <laughs> some a meme that i've seen 
Uh, it says that Jesus dentist someone. So it's like, <laughs> dem- what is it? Demonstrate value. Yeah, emotionally neglect. <laughs> Emotion- and it was like those, you know, those paintings of like Jesus. So it was yeah. like it was like him doing a miracle, and then it was like, um, <laughs> well, I don't remember what what E was, and then what's N? N is um, oh. Sorry, we're blowing this year. We're yeah, it's like demonstrate value. I th- I thought it was like emotionally neglect or like emotionally attach maybe. Okay, hold on. I'm I'm bring I'm bringing it up so okay. that we can we can find out what the actual uh dentist right, I've got is. it. Demonstrate value, okay. engage physically, yes. nurture dependence, neglect emotionally. That's the one I was thinking yeah. of. Inspire hope, separate entirely. <laughs> so all right, so yeah, I, I have the uh Okay, I've got I got the picture of it. It says demonstrate value, and it's Jesus turning water into wine. <laughs> Engage physically, it's him healing sick healing lepers. <laughs> Nurture dependence, it's him at the uh at the Last Supper. <laughs> Neglect emotionally, it's him dead in the tomb. <laughs> Inspire hope. It's yep. him rising from the dead. <laughs> and then separate entirely, and it's him rising up into heaven. <laughs> wow, that fits too good. <laughs> sorry, sorry for that <laughs> divergence. I just thought that was funny. No, that, that's yeah. amazing. But I just, yeah, I just think that like the point mm-hmm. and the core theme, I guess, mm-hmm. with like dating was to like not take no for an answer, yeah. which is kind of a bad message to yeah. send to impressionable teens. That yeah. like if a girl tells you no, just keep she's not asking interested, her. Yeah. just keep asking her, and eventually she'll like, oh, yeah, eventually you know. she'll have to say yes. yes. Um, okay, so all right, so then we come to the famous spoons. The spoon scene. Okay. So um, Jesse and Brian have this bet that if they're going to play this game and whoever loses has to stand up and sing in this diner. Okay. So um, if in it, and Brian is like, if this can happen, then I will win this bet because so he even bets. He, he says, I'll give you $50 to do this. The bet is for a hundred. And then, and off to the side, Corey says, what about a hundred? Cause he's, he knows what he's trying to do. So, uh, the spoons game that they're playing is that, um, they're going to, the way that Jesse explains it, she's like, you're going to put this spoon in your mouth and the other person's going to put their head down and you're going to smack them on the top of the head with the spoon as hard as you can. And you go until you can't stand it anymore. So games like that that have those rules where there's yeah. it's, it's like a pain tolerance yeah. thing. I feel like can never end well. Like yeah. even UFC has like yeah. a referee to say like, all right, the fight's over. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you're done. You can't fight anymore. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like they they need a UFC ref to to, to do yeah. that. Otherwise, it's you're doing it until you have a concussion and or bleeding. So the the trick is that so when you put your head down, you you they are actually leaning their head down so that they're looking at the table. Okay, so um, while they're doing this, Matt is standing behind Brian, and every time he puts his head down, Jesse pretends to go, and she's going to smack him on the head, and Brian, with the full force of his hand, smacks him on the back of the head, and so he is like, you know, when he does it to Jesse, it's doing nothing, because you can't generate much force that way, and then he's getting smacked in the head, and... Uh, I, I, I have written that Brian is an idiot and I am not surprised it took him four years to graduate from community college because like there is no reason for Matt to be standing behind him. They are in a right. booth, right. which means that Matt cannot stand behind him unless he is in another booth. Right. So Matt has left and gone to another booth to stand behind him for no reason. Yeah, also, doesn't, doesn't question it, why yeah. everyone is and like also, staring. Yeah. And also Brian does not like have a blindfold on like he has peripheral vision he should be able to like see or perceive that something behind him is happening right right <clears throat> that's a time that you know yeah. then that, that's like a defense mechanism yeah. i feel like that how could you i i yeah. sometimes you know how sometimes when you're in a car yeah. and you can tell when they, like, their eyes are looking yeah. at you or whatever how could yeah. you not feel the presence of matt like yes coming and surrounding yes. you yes. to slap you. Anyway, they're doing this in this restaurant. They are not trying to be discreet or quiet at all. For some reason, rather than being annoyed, which is what would happen in real life, everyone in this restaurant has ceased this happening, 
thinks it is funny and is invested in in the game. As every time Brian gets smacked by Matt, everyone always everyone goes, ooh, okay? Everyone's like, they're real into it that this dummy is getting his head. This di- this classic, yeah. like, you know, yeah. old school moto yeah. diner. I think it's yeah. called a pink Cadillac, right? Yeah, it's like a Route 66 style diner. I think that thing. I tried to look that up on TV Tropes okay. when we were talking about yeah. it, when I was watching it, because... I, I swear I've seen yeah. that before. And there's a couple. It, it, yeah. It's like a common like set yeah. that's used in a lot of different yeah. movies. Yeah. But I there's a, find there's a counter that. where they're serving apple pie and 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 black coffee or whatever. Um, so they're doing that. Uh, it cuts to something and it says like twelve rounds later or something, and then it's him singing the farmer and the Dell in this restaurant. Um, then it, there's a scene where someone gets pantsed. This is a PG Christian movie. They have pulled someone's pants down and showed their underwear. It's not Jesse, but it still happened, and I found it strange. <laughs> yeah, you know, pantsing was a lot more socially acceptable back in the day, I think. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty uncool now. <laughs> definitely uncool now, <laughs> and still kind of uncool then. Yeah. But, you know, was there a youth group that didn't have a little bit of pantsing drama? I mean, it was just a thing. You know, someone... You know, you got to crack a few eggs and you got to pants a few kids every once in a while. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story about it off mic. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, something that happened I, at my school. I have a story yeah. about it off mic. That's yeah. what I said. I think everyone has a weird yeah. pantsing story because it's kind of funny, but also not funny yeah. now that I think about it. So Okay. So now they are, they've been on this trip for, how many days would you say they've been on the trip for this point? Three, four? I, I would say it's implied that it's okay. four. It's still okay. the weekend. Okay. They have now made it to San Francisco. They started in Southern California. It took them four days to get to Northern California, which San Francisco isn't even really that north. It's what, like five hours? It's I mean, pretty, yeah. It's not. It's pretty yeah, far. Yeah. Uh, it's um, far, but it's, it's, it's not for, four days far. Right. It's further than you think. Yeah. Like San Diego to LA is yeah. like an hour and a half mm-hmm. with good traffic, yeah. you know. And L- I I I haven't done the drive from L A to San Francisco, but yeah. yeah, I would say it's probably if I had to rough estimate yeah. five hours, yeah. but, which should like yeah. absolutely be doable for anyone yes. who's not a total clown. Yes, you know, <laughs> anyway, maybe they, they maybe it's yeah. implied they spent the entire day yeah. at, the, at the restaurant. Yeah, and they're, they're yeah they're driving thirty miles a day and then doing another extreme sport. Yeah. Anyway, they while they are at the Golden Gate Bridge, Matt says just pee over the ledge, which seems. Pretty illegal, but also on brand for Matt. Um, uh, they continue to drive. No one in the car is wearing seatbelts. Uh, Ralph Nader is very upset. <laughs> um, they they do now. They're going to do some some skating with local skaters for some reason. They they mention this. This doesn't even happen on camera. It's mentioned in voiceover. Local skaters give them a sourdough bread starter. I do not know why. <laughs> It, whatever. Um, there's another montage. Now they're skating. Again, a bunch of people that are not the cast or body doubles. Uh, no famous skaters that I could no. that I could tell. No. Um, I, was, I was trying to see if I you know could recognize someone. All right. Do you see what I have the next thing I have written there, Mike? All right, why don't you go ahead? So I kind of set this up maybe too big. I just remember it being very, very long. I have you it know. timed. You have it timed. Um, it is very long. Okay. I, I yeah. just, uh, when I watched yeah. it, it was shorter than I remembered. Yes. But at the same time, I could see how it would feel long. Yes. But basically, it felt a, like an eternity. Yeah. Basically, there's a scene where this is the scene, again, remember. It's pitch black. Go, going from my memory, this is the one that stands out out of everything else in the movie, yeah. right? Um, it's pitch black and they're in a motel or something like it's that. It's pitch black and dead silent. And, and dead silent. And, um, doesn't it say it's like 5.42 a.m.? It's 5.45 a.m. Okay, something like that, yeah. so I have that written down, a couple notes. Yeah. Perfect. So um, these dudes are just ripping butt yeah. and lighting it on fire. And they're just like one-upping each other. And yeah. like the flames are pretty pronounced. Yeah. Like I it, wonder how they pulled the, the effect off. This, the screen just like will periodically light up with like a torrent of flame. Right. And then they have like as many stock fart sounds as you can, as you could find. Yeah. And you know, they're, and they're making a ruckus or whatever, but they're all like, you know, bent over in this awkward fart position. Like they, they, four of them lined up in a row yeah. in the exact so, same, like, so they, so eventually, 
uh, Jesse comes. She opens the door. She says, I checked us out. We're leaving in 15 minutes. She leaves. She's not surprised at all by this. It, when she opens the door, it reveals that they are laying on their back with their legs up in the air in like the birthing position. Yeah. Or like if you went to, you know, um, <laughs> like to get a pap smear or something like that's essentially i mean is that not the the yeah, yeah. It, they're like their feet are up in stirrups essentially and they're that, but all they're all them, like close to each yes, other it's yes. not like they're far away yes. it's like for the purpose of framing the shot yes they had to all squeeze yes. close together and point their high knees yes. towards the camera yeah you know yeah and and jesse just she's like i can't even be bothered to deal with this right now she's like it's too early in the morning for this um it lasts for 45 seconds. Yeah. I counted it. I timed it. It's it's a it, long time. I'll it's say, a long time for just fart jokes. Listen, I want to say like it didn't need the scene at all, but like it was 30 seconds longer than it if it, if it did need yeah. it. Uh it could have you could have just done it like each one did it one time. Right. And then she comes in and they're like, okay, right. but no, they did. And then they kept, then they kept doing it after she left. Yeah, so he's like, "Oh, I got one yeah. more, dude." Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Um, also, I just wanted to say, like, it's implied that all of these dudes are like, kind of like lazy, like, like surfer dudes, like, how are they all up and fully dressed at 545 in the morning? Shouldn't they be like, wouldn't they actually be like sleeping until the absolute last second? Yeah. They're doing all these extreme sports driving all day. They should be exhausted, but they have time to get up, get dressed and then start Ripping ones and lighting them on fire. I don't know. I've never known anyone, any high school or teenager, no. college student yeah. to get up at 545 for any reason no. unless there is a threat to yeah. life or their grades. And yeah. sometimes not even their grades. It's just oh, you sleep through that yeah. class at 6 a.m. You know, it just happens. I, I am so excited for this next part. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now they're, they need to get food. And this is going, at the drugstore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a, it, it's it's. Yeah, it's it's not a convenient store, but it's not a grocery store. It's somewhere in between. It's, yeah, drug mart kind of like that. They, for some reason, there is a clown giving out balloons at the, when they enter the store. Matt comes in first. He hugs the clown. They he gets a balloon. Okay, uh, Will and Brian come in. Corey bringing up the rear. Corey comes in. He takes a balloon from the clown. He says, "Thanks, clown." <laughs> Then the clown immediately throws confetti in his face, and then it hard cuts to another scene. It does not say why he threw the confetti in his face, how he reacted to it, nothing. He says he takes a balloon, says thanks, clown. Confetti to the face, bam. Next scene. It was insane. It. <laughs> I missed yeah. it. I missed it the first time. I had to go back. I rewatched this scene like five times to make sure I wasn't imagining it because it's so. Insane, and then it immediately hard cuts and goes to a different scene. And so, so basically, the takeaway was that the clown was, you know, conducting anti Asian racism yeah, against yeah. Corey, P- potentially, potentially racist, and yeah. threw confetti <laughs> in his face. Um, so they, this is the the scene. They Jesse gives them like a shopping list. They tear it in half and they split up into teams. So the brothers separate, and it's like. I think it's it's uh, Will and Corey and Brian and Matt, and one person is in a shopping cart and the other one's pushing, and they have tied the balloon to it. So they have two different colored balloons. So they can see who's who from across the store. Uh, they are um, running around the store trying to get all these things. Uh, Matt is employing the the Toys R Us uh, method where he's just swiping everything into the cart as they go. Um, this scene tonally, yeah. if I could interject, yeah. it reminded me of that one 80s movie with Jennifer Connelly where they're in Target. Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay. Oh, sorry. Never dude. mind. It, it just reminded me tonally where like there's a girl in there and then like there's the weird nerd guy yeah. who's like goofing around in Target and they're like spinning in carts and yeah. it's like supposed to be kind of like a romantic type of deal, yeah. you know? So they are running around trying to get all these things or whatever. They're racing so you can get it first. Uh, Corey and Will accost an old woman, like almost run her down and they fly into a maxi pad display, which Corey treats as if they are live grenades. (laughs) One of them falls on him. He yells, get it off me. And he throws it across the room. 
It, it's important this, to know their age. A yeah, twenty-two-year-old man, right? Presumably, who has interacted with women before. Yeah, I, I didn't really put that together until you put that. I mean, like obviously, I remember that scene, yeah. right? But w I didn't really put together their age because you know, as you're watching it as like a you know twelve or thirteen-year-old, you're yes. like, oh wow, they're probably Listen, just in high school. That would that would like if I was a thirteen-year-old, I would be like, that would resonate with me because yeah. that's probably how oh, I would feel gross. about it. Yeah. And like if they were thirteen-year-olds, it would be fine. As a twenty-two-year-old, I, I would just be like, I just wrecked this. I need to, I need to put it back up. Right. They say we're destroying the store and no one can stop us. We're Christians. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so so there's the the old woman she's like in a in a uh, what do you call those a motorized th what's the name of them the rascal yeah, she, yeah she's, she's like a, in a rascal she is a rascal yeah. <laughs> she is a rascal but they that's the whole reason yeah. why they crash right they're trying so to dodge she, her yeah they try and dodge her they get out of the way and then they crash into that um they then they they get to the last item on the list it's milk they round a corner Okay, they're both looking at each other. Will and Corey get there first, and they take the time to do a synchronized neck crack. So they go left, then right together. Okay, it, if they had not done this, the events that are about to transpire would not have happened. Also, why are you getting milk on a road trip with yeah. a bunch of guys? I, I it's like you get yeah. Gatorade, yeah. you get Powerade, I you get Coke. What I assumed is that they were going to have cereal. And they were getting okay. milk for the cereal. Okay. That's what I thought. That's fair. Yeah. I just think... Because they're, what... only, they're only getting a, a small one. They're not getting a full gallon or anything. I just yeah. personally have a hard time for I road trips milk. packing. Yeah. I'm lactose intolerant, so I can't. I'm but not. I'm even, the opposite. E even if I wasn't, yeah. like, remember, they're trying... I don't know how long they plan on driving around. Yeah. In, in the hot summer, yeah. right, the heat's coming out. Like, yeah. I like don't I, want milk like in I, my car. Like I said, I presumed that they were getting cereal and they were all they they're were, just going to destroy they were it that use night it right now okay. and then get rid of it okay if, that's if fair that's left over. anyway they so the the two groups of people are running towards each other trying to get this milk they uh the old woman gets there first i don't remember if she gets there first or if they crash but they, anyway they end up crashing the old woman gets the milk she she has no time for their nonsense. She says, I'll smack you and just walks away. Um, and then, oh, then Jesse absolutely roasts Brian, completely destroys him. All right. So they're laying on the floor in the wreckage of the store that they have destroyed. And uh, <laughs> Brian finds like a, a box of maxi pads next to him. And he like hands it to Jesse as if to say like, here, I got you this, <laughs> which like. Come on, dude. Yeah. And she says, wow, that's so thoughtful, but I think you're the one who needs it. Ooh, get wrecked. Get wrecked. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Jesse, she was a tough girl. Like, Straight she was, up wrecked him. She knew who she was. Yeah. Straight up put him in a body bag after that one. Um, all right. So, okay. So, so this is the Christian part of yes, this, right? Okay, this so is where the Christianity. You know, they They give a voiceover and they say something like, after three hours and like two hundred dollars or something, so they say that they helped pick up the store and have paid for the the things that they destroyed. Which like maybe just don't do it in the first place. I don't know. Um, so they come out. Everyone's like they're getting ready. They're packing out. They're going to get in the car. Uh, Brian sees a presumably a homeless or at least a family that is not well off. Uh, so it's a woman and her two sons or whatever, and he slowly. Uh, takes items from his grocery bag one by one yep. and gives it to them while the song In the Secret by Sonic Flood plays. I, I really yeah. felt like this was a weird product yeah. placement time too yeah. because the I just Oreos. remember he, he, he prominently pulls <laughs> out. And he's yeah. like, and he, yeah. I don't know that he does this, but I imagine him taking it out and he like turns it to show the logo. Yeah, well, the one I remember <laughs> is the Minute Maid orange juice yeah. that like is yeah. very clearly the only thing in focus where yeah. it's like Minute Maid yeah. <laughs> orange juice. Um, so... While this is happening, Jesse like takes notice, and the uh, Je Jesse takes notice of this while the other dinguses are having a balloon fight. They're like smacking each other with balloons, yeah. and she's watching this. Um, he eventually he he like has taken these items one by one out of this bag. He turns to go, then he just turns back and gives her the whole bag. Like, just give her the bag to begin with. You're making this whole deal out of it. You're like, you took one by one. You're like, oh. That's not enough. What about this? That's not enough. What? Just give her the whole bag. I, I mean, they didn't like intend to do yeah. it this way, but it really like 
if you really overanalyze it, yeah. I feel like you can make the argument that, that that's like he was doing it for attention. Yes. Like he was trying to get yeah. her to notice him as yeah. like a uh, good if guy. he would have yeah, if he hadn't taken the time to do it one by one, she might not have noticed. Right, exactly. Um, and then after he knows she notices, he's like, I hear it. Yeah. It served my yeah. purpose. <laughs> I proved I'm not a dentist. <laughs> would a dentist totally yeah. demonstrate value like this? No way. <laughs> <laughs> one step down um then it it in the I, i'm not kidding it's like in the middle of a sentence it smash cuts to super fan so it's like in the secret in the quiet move slow <laughs> get low <laughs> all right so um then okay so now now they are there's a montage of them snowboarding okay they have previously stated that this trip is taking place in august right. in august okay so even if there was snow okay there can be snow up on the mountains i get that i know people that have gone skiing in colorado in the summer okay it's possible that there's snow but there's no way that there's the amount of snow that they are showing on here. So, like, when you go skiing in the off-season of a place like this, there's usually a very limited amount of things that are open because they will close trails if there's not enough snow on them. They are, like, ankle-deep in powder here in the middle of August. There's it, It's ridiculous. Okay? Here's another montage of them snowboarding. It is not the cast once again. And not the same cast it, as yes. was with the first scene, right? Because this is yes. the snowboard scene number two. Yes, yes. Like we've established that they know how to snowboard, which yes. is cool. Yes. But like it seems like a weird detail yeah. that like they literally use these like extreme sports yeah. scenes as transitions when they didn't know how to move into the next scene. Yes. Like it's they, you know, some directors use like a fade or a crossfade. Yeah. They're just like, well, they're time to snowboard. in the car. Yeah. Time, time to snowboard. Yep. Time to snowboard in August. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So, do, 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 do. Uh, okay. Now they're like hanging out at like the lodge at night or whatever. Yeah, they see a band. Matt, Matt is wearing one mitten and eating hummus with his hands. So he has one mitten on and the other one is his hand. And he's dipping it into hummus and eating it like not like he doesn't have like a pita chip or like a carrot or He's just Anything. eating hummus just with a bare hand. Not even a spoon. His bare hand. He's bare hand in hummus. Um, they uh, at, at this point, the crew brings this concert to a screeching halt. Okay, so there's this cool, there's this cool, you know, rock band that's playing. The, uh, it's know. not just a cool rock band. Oh, tell me. It's Pax Two Seventeen. Okay, who was. A, you're saying like you don't know who this I is. I don't. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Sorry. They were like POD light, basically. Oh, okay. Like they're they toured together, I okay. think. Their name started with P. Yeah. And some letters that were yeah. an acronym as yeah. well. Um, but they had a couple songs. Uh, their song actually was in the the skateboarding montage okay. where it was like intricate. Are you had, among the masses interested? That's and they had that song, the adults of the country, right? You like the the POD song Youth of the Nation. Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I gotcha. Sorry. I, I wasn't Sorry everyone. That was yeah. that joke did not go over well. No, so that was the actual band POD. <laughs> yeah. And, or uh, Pax two seventeen, okay. sorry. So, it's just confusing because yeah. they both yeah. like are white guys with dreads yeah. and, and goatees. Okay. Right? So yeah, so there this there's a rad concert going on. The crew says, not on our watch, we're bringing this to a screeching halt. <laughs> Matt gets up on stage and he's like, I'm gonna read a poem. And it's dedicated to my cousin, who I have creepily stroked the hair of and other things. And and, uh, the poem is not worth mentioning except for one line. And it says, how many times must I crush my privates? Which, weird line to have in a poem. Um, Then uh, About your cousin. Yeah, well, like dedicated to her. Because I guess, which like... They were talking about it was basically like she had tried really hard to like do a um like a rail slide on a table oh, or something. That's right. yes. Okay. Which like it's weird, uh, to be like, hey, remember when you like smacked your genitals against this table earlier? Check this out. <laughs> Got um, it, okay. Uh so oh man, this is great. Um they they do a like a flashback of 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 earlier in the day when she was trying to to do this and like brian had like offered to teach her how to do this and she was like no i'm gonna do it myself or whatever so 
she she has fallen down and Brian's like, hey man, if you just let a professional teach you, Jesse smacks the taste right out of his mouth. She straight she straight up decks him, and, and one of his friends goes, dude, you just got decked, man. Like he didn't know. Yeah, she's, yeah. yeah she's sm- she smacked him real good. I just um, find that to be like from an editing standpoint, yeah. just a really weird choice. Yeah. Of like, why would why do you flash back to a scene that happened? <laughs> it happened that, not the, mere, this, mere hours ago. Yeah, like why it would could you, have just been shown in order? And right. Then, yeah. Yeah, it, um, it could have been shown in yeah. order, and that whole snowboarding scene yeah. wasn't even that long, anyways. Yeah. So um, I don't know. The, yeah. So basically, it's like. Um, there's Jesse starting to like get into Brian or whatever. Um, there's a scene where Matt brushes his teeth with a can of Coke. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Just well, well, the jack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. There. Okay. This is, this scene is the most insane thing in the entire movie. I'm going to, and like we've, we've heard some of the things we've talked about. This scene is the one. Okay. They are trying to find a place to camp for the night. There's only one spot left. They pull up. Another crew pulls up. They get out. At this point, it becomes clear that they are going to be do a parody of like Chinese kung fu movies from like the 60s where they have dubbed over their lips in English and their mouths do not match what is happening. <laughs> so everyone is doing these voiceovers where their lips don't match what they're saying, where they're basically like... They shot it once and they just moved their lips and then they did they did a voiceover. Except for Matt, whose lips line up exactly with what is happening. <laughs> and he looks around while it's happening as if to imply, why is everyone else doing this and it's not happening to me? It, it, it's it's kind of like uh, that... Yeah. That episode of King of the Hill when Boomhauer yeah. talks normal yeah. from his perspective, yes. you know, where they're all yes. describing the different yes. thing. Yes. Boomhauer is like, I don't know. I think that the microwave got turned off. Yeah, and you everyone know. else sounds like Boomhauer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talk about man. <laughs> well, you know, get, just go down and talk about it. Yeah. Okay. So um, there's a there's a a um, uh, Mike. Would you like to do a reading here? I have the lines there. Would you be uh, bad guy number one? Sure. <clears throat> You wish to fight? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> so, this is a line that happens. They, 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 they're like gonna throw down for this camping spot. One of them says that. Will just starts barking like a dog, and then someone goes, "What was that?" Um, all right. Then there is an absurd fight scene that it heavily uses sound effects, including the Howie scream. If you don't know what the Howie scream is, go look it up. It's the best fake scream ever. Is that different than the Wilhelm scream? Yes. The Wilhelm scream is different. The Howie's The scream, Wilhelm scream is like, oh! Yeah. Like, the, the Howie scream is like... impression. Uh, let me see if I could... Uh, it's like... Ah! It's like real long and loud and stuff. The Howie scream is nuts. Go check it out. Um... And at one point, there are, the sound effect is being looped over top of itself before it even ends. So there's multiple instances of it playing over top of each other, like of like they're like slapping and like it's just like it hasn't it hasn't even ended yet, and they started another one. This is like it's, a real like street fight yes. though, right? Where there's yes. like kicking and punching. Yes. And they have like, whoosh, yeah, whoosh, 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 like those um, kind of sounds see. in there. Yes, um, <laughs> someone throws a marshmallow at Matt. He picks it up off the ground, bites it, and then spits it out. Um, they for sure choreographed this scene immediately before shooting it. There was no thought put into this fight no. at all. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, a dude tries to give Jesse flowers as to say, like, hey, let's stop fighting. She straight up kicks him in the balls. Um, this fight scene, it lasts for three minutes. Yeah, It's... It is so long. I don't even know how to describe it. That it just it just pops out of nowhere, and the tone changes, and you're like, okay, this is kind of cool, I guess. But are they really gonna do this like the rest of the movie? <laughs> like that's what I was thinking. Like, you know, is the rest of the movie just gonna be like fighting the the Jade Dragon who who sent these mafia members yeah, to kill him or something? It's, like, it's way too long. It's yeah. ridiculous. Um. Then okay, so they 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 lose the fight, uh, which means that this group of men was willing to like 
beat up a woman. Uh, <laughs> Uh, not not very badly apparently because they don't seem to be very injured and uh, you know that says they did they did change the facts of yeah this so, may be a fact yeah, change in this. it seems like it might be hey would you guys uh, mind moving yeah sure. okay. <laughs> so um so they let's see um they're sitting around like a campfire this and, is like another tender moment yes, right okay. where they they're like this is yeah. where they really get spiritual yes. they they start talking about you know the classic campfire things and. They say like, oh man, Grandpa G was so cool. Remember when he used to to do this and he'd have fish scales in his car or whatever, like yeah. snake scales, I think he said. And yeah. Like he seemed like an interesting guy. Yeah. It just seems like a... So, yeah, at this point, um, Corey said, which Corey thinks that his grandpa has left him his entire fortune, despite the fact that he knows his grandma is still alive. <laughs> which is ridiculous that he's like he, like it may be one thing if he's like i'm going to get in there he he says he thinks he left him everything mm-hmm. and is like not his wife that's still alive all right whatever he didn't do any kind yeah. he could have talked to his dad or like yeah. you know anyone and yeah maybe if they, they like stopped they, home first before they it, left it is shown that they have cell phones yeah People in this group had cell phones. He could have made a call. Yeah. He could have been like, hey, we're coming. All right, whatever. So they, this, I think, is this when they have the little, like, um, they have this thing where, like, Jesse talks about something that happened to her and, like, like guys, she's turned her, to, her parents she, are getting divorced. Yeah. And she, like, she, like, turned to God and he was there yeah. for her or something. And, yeah. and Corey's like, what are you going to do, Jesse? You're going to take me to church? And then Will's like, she just did, bro. <laughs> oh, get wrecked! Um, anyway, that's the amount of that's as as much spiritual Christian talk is going to happen. It's thirty seconds less, right. more. I don't know, barely more. Um, it was a kind of like a, almost. A, I don't want to say like I kiss dating goodbye, but yeah. I'm trying to think of like what's that philosophy that was in Christian circles where like I don't know. It was like unsure. A, it was like along yeah. the same lines where it was like, oh, courtship, okay, I guess, yeah. is what I'm going for. Sorry. Yeah. So I, I should know that as a graduate of Grove City College's courtship and marriage class. That's true. So, like, I'm thinking of Got like. B plus. Shout I, out to Dr. Thrasher. <laughs> I'm just thinking of like an example of like they're trying to kindle this relationship but not yeah. call it dating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. They're trying to like make it an example yeah. of courtship, I guess. And uh-huh. so she kind of like opens up and I, I think she says something. So, I don't think. Of, I think. That happens later. Oh, that happens this, later. This okay. Is, this is Corey and Jesse. You're thinking of yes. Ryan and Jesse. Yes. Happens later. Sorry. Yep. That's all right. Now there's a montage of skateboarding and BMX, and it is clearly just the X Games footage. It literally says X Games on the ramp. Does it really? It does. Um, once again, I was unable to identify any famous skaters that I knew. Um, I guess they couldn't get the the rights to the Tony Hawk uh, footage or whatever. Um, because in this one, it's clear that they are not, they are watching it and not participating, but right. like, come on, you could get Tony Hawk footage for that. I mean, if they're going to watch it, just, you know, again, you're going to put it in the, Birdman you're, in it. Yeah. You're going to put it in the movie, right? Yeah. Like you should have, have it like, how do the characters interact with this? But it feels like sometimes yeah, like, we're watching like, this. It's not like they're in the stands watching it. It's just like, Hey, we went and watched the X games anyway. Yeah. Like <laughs> any, um, let's see. Oh, here, here's the line that it says before before the X Games footage starts. By the time we arrived, the fat Madonnas and sick tail whips were already in session. <laughs> is, are those even things? Yeah, I don't... a Madonna is a skateboard trick, and a and the tail whip is a, is a uh, bike. Yeah, trick. I knew I knew a tail whip was the same. I thing. think I don't think a Madonna Madonna is for sure a skateboard trick, and sometimes they like also exist as. BMX tricks, but I don't think that's one of them. Um, I, this whole movie is like that that yeah. weird surfer dude who gives an interview. He's like, dude, I got so pity. Like, wha Yeah. Like, just took that lingo and, yeah. like, sprinkled it throughout. Yeah. And it's like the same person. Yeah. Four it's like times. they just went into Tony Hawk and looked at the move list and was like, that one. That's the one. Which also, why not Christ Air? That, like, like, that was the perfect chance. Yeah. Christ Air. Um, Let's see. So um, watch the X Games. Yes. Um, then they are like driving and they, for some reason, they, I don't remember how they get here or whatever, but they are <clears throat> going to have another paintball gun fight. 
I think I think it's like they're sleeping in the car or whatever, and they wake up. By the way, their car is like a. They call it a Toyota, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a Jeep Toyota that they've like modded. It it has no roof. Um, whatever. So they're sleeping in the back, and I, someone I don't know anything yeah. about the cars. Yeah, but the YouTube comments. I, I read every single one of those yeah. things. And uh, someone in the comments was like, "Actually, it's a Volkswagen." Okay, well, <laughs> so so there's a little goof and gaff for you, yeah. just in case you're a car put guy. It, put it on IMDb. Yeah, it is not a Toyota; it okay. is a Volkswagen. So anyway, they um, for what? So two of them are sleeping, and the other two are like, apparently, it's like unsporting to shoot someone without alerting them first. So they would say like, "Hey," and they. At that point, they wake up. For some reason, they are keeping their paintball guns in the engine of the car. It is not the trunk. It it's is not the Tesla trunk. No, it it's is, straight up the engine. It is the engine of the car. They have like they have they have kept secret paintball guns in the engine of the car. So they pop the hood and they get these paintball guns out. Now they have hoppers and they have CO two tanks. Now, um, let's see. They, they, um, just gotta, like, go they, on they are shooting at their friends. None of them are wearing masks. It is incredibly dangerous. The first thing they teach you when you play paintball is never take your mask off ever for any reason. Because if you get hit in the eye, you can go blind. Right. And these are their friends and they're shooting at them from, I want to say, less than 20 feet away with no mask on. With no utter disregard of whether or not they make their friends go blind or it would have been easier just to get stock footage of paintball yeah. players because yeah. they'll be wearing yeah. their masks. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, okay. So they do the paintball okay. war. Yes. Okay. And then so this is where Brian and someone, Chris come in. W- so they because there are because there are five of them. Only four of them are taking place. Will claims he says I'm the UN Peace Corps, which are two different things. But he's but how is he supposed to? Know? Yeah, but he's yeah he's he he graduated in two years. He's the smart one. He so he like gets his camera and starts filming it or whatever. So Jesse, I'm the president yeah, senator Jesse Jesse and Brian are on a team and Corey and Matt are on a team or whatever. They are. <clears throat> uh, anyway, they. Uh, uh, Brian does this. He like makes this plan where he's gonna like sacrifice himself so Jesse can kill them or whatever, or you know hit not kill, shoot him with paintballs, whatever. Then Jesse and Brian do this whole bit in front of everyone where he's like, "I'm dying," and she's like, "Oh, you saved me. You took you took a bullet for." It. They're doing a whole bit. They're doing this whole you know thing, and everyone's just like, "What?" Anyway, um, then then they kiss. Brian clearly has no idea what he's doing with this kiss. He is clearly in over his head. This is too much woman for him to handle. <laughs> he does not know. This is where the Dennis yeah. and the Brian diverge. Yeah. He, he yeah. just talked a big game, yeah. but he really you know, <laughs> couldn't back it up. Um, okay. Then something ha- – Brian, as soon as he realizes that a second kiss is not coming – immediately starts burning bridges with Jesse. Uh, like, she was like, hey, maybe we shouldn't. And then he's like, he just like t- turns on her. He's like, yeah. oh, you're, he's like, this is a real, real what? incel, yeah. real <laughs> in- incel vibe here. He's like, Definitely. Yeah. Um, he, he, she like pulls away, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, and she's like, what? What, what, what was wrong? Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what's, she, what's the matter? She, she, yeah, she's like, yeah, you don't deserve a nice guy like me. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, you just want, you just want to date jerks. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Um, Jesse, who it is has been established is poor, decides that she is going to take a taxi to an entire other state, <laughs> which is like yeah, that was before Uber is driving like, the competition. It's then. like I just like it cost me like thirty dollars to get an Uber from where I got my vaccine to my house. Yeah, and this woman's going to take a taxi. To another state, which also like she just got a taxi driver. It's like, yeah, cool. I'll drive to a different state 
I don't need to like be home. He's not a truck driver. Can you he has ma- an yeah. area that he operates in. Yeah, he drives for free on the way back. So can <laughs> yeah, you imagine that yeah. Jesse's like, or oh yeah, he to, or he has to find someone who's like, hey, did you want to go to another state now? Like, come on. Maybe you should hang around. You know, the, maybe they have a lot of cousins that they can meet at yeah. like, chop shops up there where they can work yeah. on their car and be like, hey, hey, it's my cousin so and so. Cousin Cletus is taking us to. Yeah, they should have had a whole Nevada thing where all of their co- they had cousins that owned gas stations around it's around like the, the Italian mafia. Yeah. <laughs> it's the mafia. Um, okay. Uh, I think I, I missed a part, but there is a, a brief montage of them doing some rock climbing that I think happens before the paintball. Um, okay. This, at this point, <laughs> they are, Will and Brian are like having a, like a deep discussion or something. And Will, <laughs> Will says he gives his voiceover to Matt. He just says like, do this voiceover for me. And it cuts to Matt and he's like thinking in his head. He's like, what is he talking about? What, is, what am I doing? And, and it's like, this is the most meta. This is the part I was talking about where it's like the most meta thing where he's just is like, hey, do my voiceover for me. I got to talk to my brother. And it cuts to Matt and he's just like, what? Why is this happening? Um <clears throat> It was a very Monty yeah. Python y yes. type of moment yes. it was, know, where it's breaking it the was fourth my, wall. It was my and, favorite joke. Yeah. <laughs> it was my favorite joke for sure. Um, then it's they they're like cold for some reason. Matt says, if you guys are cold, you can just pee your pants. It worked for me. Um, then we find out that uh, we see Grandpa G's grave. His last name presumably started with a G. On the grave, it says Grandpa G, but it's spelled G E E. What? Why not just put the letter? I mean, I don't know. Also, why not just put his name? I mean, I know some <laughs> people like I know some people, but like his wife probably didn't call him Grandpa G. Right. Most of the people in his life probably did not call him that. So, I mean, maybe just put his name. Um, uh, we find out that Grandpa G was a snake meat salesman, <laughs> and then he lost all his money in the snake meat market <laughs> when it didn't pay. It, the tagline was "the other other white meat." Yeah, he went all in on snake meat. Yes. I, I mean, you know, I, I get that it's supposed to be comical or yeah. whatever, but it is just kind of weird that like you're always in this limbo of like, are we supposed to feel like genuinely sorry for? Yeah. For these guys yeah. and Corey, right? Because like yeah. it goes back to me that first scene where they're on the beach where he first gets the news. It's yeah. like, are we supposed to like laugh or yeah. like how close were you? Yeah. Like, is he kind of like, isn't he kind of being selfish where yeah. he like he doesn't take any time to process his yeah. grandpa's death? He's just like, oh, I'm gonna get some snake money. Yeah, you know? and like, so so they they find out that uh, turns out Corey is not getting an inheritance because his his grandpa lost it all in the snake meat market or whatever. Um, then we find out that <laughs> Corey's dad is like a real jerk. Like, well, like the worst, like we find out that his stepdad took the time to call Corey while he was on vacation with his friends and not only say your grandpa died, which was true, but then to lie and say, you're going to inherit all of his money, even though the stepdad knew that he had lost it. And then, and they're like, my stepdad was keeping me away from seeing my grandpa. You're 22. Right. You're not a kid. That's the weirdest thing that like, are you supposed to feel like sad or yeah. like bad? Are you supposed to be like, Oh yeah. Grandpa died. We're going to be rich, bro. Yeah, like it's, it's totally misses the mark yeah. for sure. Anyway, you find out that, the the grandpa did leave them a car and the car was like, they all remember it being like this sick hot rod. Turns out it's a pile of junk. Okay. They, um, will has a plan to get them home and his plan to get them home is to sell the car and then use the money to buy plane tickets to Alaska. Mike, do you remember where they're from? California. Is California Alaska? It is not. It sure isn't. I, I, just I don't know say- why. This is his plan. He's like, oh, we're going to get us home 
by going to Alaska. The whole <clears throat> thing doesn't make sense. And yeah. if you've ever flown or traveled, yeah. you know that like you have to go for the major airport hubs. Yes. There's every airport in the United States yes. flies into LAX, yeah. right? At some time or another. Yes. But to like get flights to like Anchorage yeah. or Juneau yeah, or presumably something. Presumably at this point they are in Seattle. Okay. So, so which does probably fly. More common. That's Alaska where, Air. That's yeah. where most of the flights that go to Alaska originate right. from is because it's the closest major city or whatever. That's true. So when they talk about going yeah. to Alaska, yeah. I just think of like what I think of to tie this yeah. into another show yeah. was in Malcolm in the Middle, yeah. um, where the oldest, the oldest one, brother, yeah. the oldest brother says yeah. like, oh, I'm going to go to Alaska. Yeah. And then he spends like an entire season driving across the country to get yeah. there only for it to turn out that like, you know, Alaska is not what he thought it was. Yeah. Right. But anyways, uh, my other point here too, is they, they absolutely lack any sort of like financial planning and sense or whatever. Cause yeah. like I get it. They're having fun, you know, they're going for a yes. drive, but like it's well established that money is an issue, right? The whole like, plot of the movie up to this point was we need to get, we need to get home so we can, you know, finish our trip or do whatever. And the plan was go to Washington, get the inheritance and then use that money to to continue the trip or to to go home or whatever. Right. So at this point, they've made it there. There is no inheritance. They need to get home. And they said, our way home is by flying to Alaska. And by selling a car and flying to Alaska. Yes. Like, okay, so uh, they try to sell this car like out on the lawn. They're trying to sell it. Like they're trying to sell it for $2,000. They're, they're knocking the price down. Um, so okay so they at one point Corey pretends to have been hit by a car and lays in the street in order to get a woman who is driving a nice car like a porsche or like a convertible or something to stop so they can try to sell her a car that she does not need or want like <laughs> they, this is they, like better call not, Saul yeah, like yeah she tries slipping she, jimmy yeah so this woman pulls over to see if he's okay, and they immediately try to sell her a car. Like, you can see that she has a better car than the one you're trying to sell. Like, w w also, what's she going to do? She's going to leave her nice car here and take this this junk? Or, like, wh I mean, what's the, there, what's the there, plan? There's here? no financing. Yeah. It's like, hey, let me get pre approved from my bank yeah. first before I can buy this. It's just like, uh, I guess I have $1,500 cash yeah. I can give you. I mean, so, I don't know. So, eventually, um, uh, Will comes in and he says, "Hey, y'all ever heard of this thing called the internet?" <laughs> and and he has uh, sold the car for scrap metal on like junkyard.com or something um, for like two thousand dollars or whatever. Um, so once again, they're going to go to Alaska in August, which probably more snow than California, but still not peak ski season but th that's still their plan They're, we're going to alaska so you know you can drive to alaska too yes yes like it is good. technically possible yeah, especially just go when through it's... canada maybe they don't have passports though we don't know they went to mexico you're right they did they They're also they... at that point you didn't need a passport to get right to canada. That's, it didn't even yeah. matter anyway well, yeah whatever but but i guess my point yeah. is that like why are you flying to alaska yeah when like you've you've driven yeah. your car what it, like so the reason they were gonna fly to alaska is they got really cheap tickets there was like uh, a, a tour group that like was gonna go and they all got sick and they're trying to offload their tickets so james x Machina yeah. were like yeah, getting french to tourists yeah, yeah whatever um so they're like hey while we're here let's swing by uh u-dub and we're gonna try and pick up jesse for brian and we're gonna try and get her to go or whatever so um Brian, uh, they show up at this like freshman orientation that she is leading. Um, she's like a you know, so she, it's senior. That she's older. Yeah. Right? She, yeah. At, at first, I was like, "Oh no, she's like 18. What's then? Uh, then I remembered like, "Oh, she's in charge of student body or whatever." Yeah. So she's like a senior. She's doing this. Brian comes in and he he tells Jesse essentially, "I want you to abandon college and your future at law school to go on a week long ski trip to Alaska with me." Brian is a maniac. He is an absolute psychopath. That sounds like a reasonable <laughs> ask for a woman that you yes. like. He'd be like, "Listen, hey, I know I've known you. Listen, I know I've known you for five weeks because this how, is crazy you know, because that's how long it took us to drive across three states. But <laughs> yeah, but uh, hey, I've just met you. Yeah, and this is crazy. Here's my number. Here's a plane ticket. Ski trip, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so uh, Jesse, again, wisely says, no thanks. <laughs> um, as they're leaving, Matt, like, winks at this this chick in the audience and she is like down to clown um let's see okay so as they're leaving matt uh, like on the back table takes a bunch of flyers for clubs at a college that he does not go to and does not intend to come back to and they leave immediately so he's like taking flyers for clubs that like why I don't know. Like, he's just yeah. being a jerk. Yeah. And he's the quirky random yeah. one. He yeah. just, I, I think it was to show that he really, yeah. you know, had a negative view of college maybe. Yeah. And now he's like, wow, this is awesome. Yeah. College is great. Especially if I can meet all these weird girls who love me too. That was the, that was the vibe that I got that he was um, trying to like do that yeah. to show how much like his okay. mind has changed about yeah. college, you know? So yeah, Jesse's like, I can't do that. I have to be here. So they leave. They get, they're getting on. They give her the ticket anyway. They're like, here's the ticket. Maybe you change your mind. They get on the plane. They're ready to go to Alaska. They all sit down or whatever. And uh, this like flight attendant or whatever like pretends to drop like a cell phone or something on the ground, or is it his phone or something? And she she gives it to. I she pretends to drop something and gives it to him. And then he gets a phone call and he picks it up and it's Jesse and she um, is surprised she's on the plane. Uh, but like, okay, here's the, the one thing I want to say about this. All right. So they bought all of these tickets from a group, presumably who were sitting together. <laughs> all of their seats are in like a row together. Right. And then Jesse, whose ticket they bought from the same group, is at the back of the plane. <laughs> and anyway, so she she stands up and maybe it was yeah. the security. Maybe yeah. it was like the for the federal agent yeah. who was flying with them. Yeah, <laughs> the air marshal. Yeah, the air marshal. Uh, Jesse took the air marshal's yeah. ticket. So she she comes up and they they like hug and like um, they have already they're you, like on cell phones. Yeah, right? yeah they're talking they're on like, cell phones face to face. And first of all, they're on a cell phone on a plane, which like, maybe, I don't know, maybe they didn't make you turn your phones off back then. I assume they probably did. I, th- I, w- I thought it was implied that it was boarding, but the thought that they I They were had boarding, to... but they still would have been like, hey, turn your cell phones off. Yeah. Also, get out of the aisle that's way. A, that's and, exactly my yeah, point. I and, flew on, you know, yeah, way too many flights yeah, to have people yeah. just having this and, amazing lovey-dovey yeah. scene in front of everyone when I'm just trying to put my thing yeah, and sit down because yeah. I've had I'm a long... I'm trying to go to Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all these people are just like cool with it. They're blocking the entire <laughs> thing and like talking on the cell phones real loud. And um, they um, they do not kiss because this movie has already used all of their allocated kisses. <laughs> and it ended <laughs> yeah. poorly. So yeah. I, I so, think that was an out for like the, the Christian yeah. thought where it was like kissing before marriage is there yeah. there were some people who yeah. believe that at the time and, and probably so still do. So what does happen though, which I would argue is potentially more sensuous is that Jesse like kisses his neck a lot, like a lot. Yeah. And I was like I, I maybe just like hold your head next to him like like if you either kiss him or don't, but like Kissing his Kissing the neck, neck is, is like, is, it's yeah. weird. Like, quit trying to give this dude a hickey in the middle of an airplane. Especially yeah. because she really was kind of cold on him. And then all yeah. of a sudden had this weird yeah. turn of heart. Yeah. Like, despite also, him really not yeah. having too many yeah. redeeming qualities throughout yeah. this, in my opinion. Also, I just, I just remember this earlier. There's a scene where Jesse talked about, like, she dated guys. And then she uses the phrase when I woke up in the morning, they would be gone implying that she slept with them. And then immediately says that like, she's waiting for marriage. It's like, fine. That's, that's cool. But but, like, maybe just like use a different turn of phrase. You could just be like, they left me or like, as as soon as it got serious, they all left me, but they, they definitely, the way it was worded definitely implied, like she slept with all these dudes and then they left her. And then they immediately like backtrack. Just, just, just use a different word. You have people writing this movie. Like you could, Oh, anyway. 
Yeah, it, but I, I guess my point was yeah. that like it was uh, getting back to my yeah. earlier point about yeah. the kiss. Yeah, is that like they didn't have to like explicitly endorse the kissing yeah. because you can be like, well, actually, yeah. uh, the kiss was a negative thing because yeah. you see how he freaked out and yeah. it, like impaired their relationship. Yeah. I can just imagine and, some like instead, people really conservative yeah. parents being like, you know what, that was a yeah. good message to send. Yeah, like instead, if you kiss before marriage, you'll complicate yeah. these things too fast. Instead, Jesse's like, hope you brought a turtle back on this, <laughs> on this trip. Um, oh. And then Jesse also says that class doesn't start for a week, which I was like, why were you like just go on the trip anyway? Free, right. Free trip to Alaska. Right. Anyway, uh, then they then they go snowboarding and that's the end of the movie pretty much. Yeah. It's that that's the thing that like annoys me too, yeah. because like every conflict that they yeah. set up in this was just so like Yeah. Oh yeah, that wasn't. Also, real. I, I I do want to bring it back. They they earlier when they're talking right before uh, Will gives his voiceover to Matt. They mention the sister again one time in one sentence. They're like, this is just like when Ashley died or something. Yeah. And then, yeah. Anyway, that's you know, her. Um, that's pretty much the whole movie. And then there was one thing I wanted to mention in the credits. Jose Cuervo paid for product placement. Seriously. In this movie. Yes. In the bar scene. In- yes. In- Which, insane. <laughs> yes. Jose Cuervo proudly sponsored extreme day is that a first is this the first alcoholic company to have a sponsorship in a christian movie i don't know but you can go back and look through the the credits it's in there yeah that's that's pretty impressive so let's get to the ratings right because i think it's always important to you know we've reflected on this we've talked about the plot in terms of uh you know the ratings and the reviews for me um it was Obviously not as good as I remembered, but there are a lot of like one-liners in there that were kind of zippy yeah. that are like memorable and like how weird they are. And I think you touched on a lot of them that were my favorites. Yeah. I mean, you know, just like any time that there was banter, be like, yeah. you know, the, especially the the pad scene, right? Yeah. Just like yeah. to to me, like it's funny things like that that like yeah. you just stick in your head. So so for that reason, I feel like for me, it was like uh, just still to give kind some, of enjoyable. To give some context to this, are you rating this as a movie in general or as a like a Christian a movie specifically targeted at Christians or do you want to give two ratings uh, uh, let me give two ratings okay go ahead uh, I'm gonna give the the Christian movie also I think we should rate this out of farts lit on fire okay <laughs> well I, I will give this in terms of a Christian movie yeah I will give this uh, a four farts on fire out of five Okay. And, good and, and here's why. Yeah. Um, I think that they really knew their target audience. Yeah. And they put as much cool stuff in there as yeah. they could. Mm-hmm. And the cool stuff that they put in was actually relevant to the time. It wasn't like awkward and weird of like yeah. grandpa trying to rap at church or yeah. whatever. It was pretty hip with like the style yeah. and the fashion. I mean, they looked like you know the members of Blink One Eighty Two throughout mad this entire Puka thing. Shell necklaces. Yeah, Puka Shell necklaces and yeah. Puma, and yeah. you know the music was on Truth, point. Truth Soul Armor on everyone. Truth Soul Armor on everyone. So I feel like they actually did a good job of that, and it's a memorable movie. Um, in terms of the Christian values in it, almost nothing. Yeah, uh, bare, this is the not, bare minimum, and, and, and that's and that's kind of that works in his favor for me. This, this in is terms a real, of Christian uh, movies, this is a real D's to get degrees type of movie where they're like, we're we're just barely skating by. <laughs> yeah, and and, and 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 I'm keeping that in context of Christian movies, right? Yeah. Because my big gripe with a lot of Christian movies yeah. is that they beat you over the head with a message yeah. that like. As soon as you see the character, it's like yeah. they're set up to be the bad guy yeah. who turns to Christ somewhere around the, the half hour mark, and then he ends up leading yeah. worship in the final scene. What I know. want to say about it is that there's just enough in this movie to make non-Christians uncomfortable, which seems like, I don't know, it seems like at that point, like either like make it a little bit more explicit and make it worthwhile, or just cut it out, because it's just going to make non-Christians uncomfortable and for other Christians like yeah for like the the target audience of teenagers they might be like oh this is kind of neat but like watching this now as like a 30 year old I was like this is like awkward yeah yeah, yeah. it would have been yeah. like they could have they could have yeah. e- if they went all in on like the the positive they could, teenage I mean, message they, and they could like it wouldn't have been that hard I don't think it, it could have you could have fixed it pretty easily with just like go a little more in depth cut out 30 seconds of farting put 30 seconds of the gospel in or whatever. Right. And I don't know. 
Yeah. So give me your Christian rating score. I'm curious to, okay. to see yours. Um, so, I mean, I don't have a lot, a ton of experience with like movies directly targeted to Christians. I think I've seen Fireproof. Okay. That might be the only other one. Oh, Christian Mingle, yes. uh, which that movie rules and we got to watch it. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, I will say it. I, I'll, I'll say like, I don't know. I'm having trouble trying to like, I don't want to hedge my, I don't want to rate it too high. Sure. Okay. Sure. So I'll, I'll say, I'll say three and a half uh, lit farts for okay. me <laughs> because I do think like, like I said, if I was a teenager and I saw this in youth group at the time, I would have been like, this movie is rad. Right. And I would have been like trying to show it to my, my friends from school. I mean like, look how cool this movie is and stuff like that. But I don't think it's aged well. No. So I think that's hurting it. That's hurting my school. Like if you ask me, 13 year old me, I would have been like six, six out of six out of five or whatever. Um, but I, I mean, I think it, like I said, it, it was maybe like a trailblazer in that respect. And that it tried to do something that other people were afraid to try. And it was bankrolled by truth soul armor. So shout out to them. Also shout out for putting it for free on YouTube. Yeah. I, so I read their comment on YouTube because yeah. at first I thought it was just some guy uploading it. Yeah. Right? Same. Yeah. And uh, I realized that they're, I they're, them in the, in the opening title. Like, Oh, they funded this. Yeah. yeah. So they're actually trying to like make a comeback of sorts, I guess is truth. Soul As armor. the brand or the movie. Like they're trying I to think do both. Okay. I think both. And I think this is part of it. Um, and so I guess so this is where my um, outside of that Christian sphere rating goes. Yeah. I mean, in terms of actual movies, this to me is basically a college project. Yeah. You know, this this isn't. Uh, you know, I, I'm thinking of there. There's another movie I think with Zach Galifianakis that's a snowboard movie. Um, it's a, called Cold Crush or something like that. I, I don't know it, but that could it. be true. It's like kind of like a stoner, campy movie yeah. about extreme sports. Yeah. But like that one, they definitely went cruder, obviously. Yeah. Like there's some, yeah. you know, there's like college partying and drinking yeah. and things like that. Uh -huh. So I think tonally it hits all those same things, but in a lot more awkward of a way. Because like I said, is like, you know, for a movie like that, it was it was like at least like the the backdrop of the the movie was extreme sports. Yeah. Whereas like this was basically a commercial to watch the X Games. It yeah. felt like you know that like it was yeah. tied together, but it didn't really serve a purpose of telling any story. And and no so, no characters were really that likable to yeah. be honest. That like I wasn't rooting for Jesse. Yeah. You know I wasn't rooting for Brian. I, I will Matt. say I think Jesse's probably the most likable. Yeah. Will is basically like nothing he's bland yeah uh brian i would say is probably mostly unlikable um i mean he's you know does some things towards the end to like yeah bring him back up Corey, i would also say is like he's a little bit likable because you're kind of sympathetic towards him because like these bad things happen to him i think matt i would say is probably the second most likable because he's like you know the comedic relief for the movie and some of the things he does are i think pretty funny right he's the yeah. screech yeah. you know yeah, the, exactly. yeah the weird guy yeah. doing things in terms of actual movie though getting back to my rating yeah. i i can't in good conscience give this anything less than like a two and a half okay um so what i'll say anything for, more than a two yeah. and a half of so a real movie what i will say for it is like this is the type of movie that it was like perfect for uh, a podcast that we are clearly ripping off right now. How did this get made? Mm -hmm. And they're never going to do this because like, it just like wouldn't, they, they wouldn't know about it to do it or whatever. But if it did, I feel like there's a lot of like, at least for me, I would probably watch this movie again with people to like make fun of it. Right. Like, it is that type of movie where it would have, it's re so bad. It has it's rewatchability kind of for that purpose. Yeah. It's it's a you know a so bad it's good type of movie, mm -hmm. so it is not high art. It is not any. Right. It's not going to be anyone's favorite movie. But I could see you know getting together with some people and like, hey, this movie is insane. Check this out. Yeah. Uh, and for that reason, I think I would probably, um, in terms of like a general movie, with that in mind, I probably would give it a two and a half to a, th a two and a half to a three. Not because it's good, but because it's so like ridiculous and like fun to make fun of 
that it is enjoyable. So I'm rating this on how enjoyable the movie is and the experience is, not, not like how good I think the actual movie and acting are. Yes. Um, that's definitely fair. Yes, I, I think yeah. that's that's a really good take on it. And I actually think that this format, yeah. had this come out in the days of YouTube, yeah. I feel like a lot of these things would have been easily like yeah. w- would be cut up into memes or sketches you, or things that do like... Do you want to try and get a meme going for this? What should the meme be? What would it be? We'll think about it. We'll we'll let you know on our on our Instagram like, post, I, I, and you guys can start spamming that spamming that meme or that hashtag. Yeah, I just yeah. feel like there's a lot of uh, opportunity here yeah. for like you know just like using these templates for things because there's just so many different weird scenes yeah. of like you know yeah. I, uh, <laughs> all I can think of is the stupid turban and his baba yeah. But yeah. Obviously, I can't let that one go viral yeah. now. I'm sure that yeah. Will, that will uh, not end well, yeah. but I don't know. I'm just uh, there's just so many weird things about it that I think that like this day and age, yeah. they could have. It's like a clip show almost yeah. of like funny scenes that like are funny, yeah. have nothing really to do with each other, but like they're funny, like the like the kung fu fight, yeah. right? That's funny in isolation, uh-huh. but like together with everything, uh, it doesn't really add anything to it. But it would be funny on its own if, if someone saw that scene and be like, what movie is that from? They'd be like, oh, it's Extreme Days. Okay, so I know we're running super long here. That's okay. We I, I feel like we needed it. We're going to try and wrap this up quickly. There's some things I need to hit. The cast of this movie, okay, apparently were very pro- – two of them were somewhat prominent actors afterwards. So, Corey – uh, his name is Dante uh, Basco. I think that's how you would pronounce it. Uh, so here are the things that you may know him from. Uh, Prince Zuko from Avatar. Avatar The Last Airbender, not Avatar the Blue Cat movie. Um, he's Jake Long from uh, Disney Channel's American Dragon, Jake Long. He was Rufio in Hook. Um, and he had, you know, has been in some other things here. It says he was in... Uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, hanging with Mr. Cooper, Moesha. He was on several Verizon wireless commercials, um, a Sprite commercial. Um, he, he's, you know, you may have heard of him. Um, so he really did it. He made a yeah. career from. Yeah, not, I would not say probably from not this. from Extreme Days, but yeah. Um, and then the other one, his name, so this is, uh, I believe, is Will. Let me check. Yeah, he's Will. His name is A.J. Buckley, um, and he was on CSI New York. Um, his name was – I've never seen that, but his name was Adam Ross on CSI New York. It appears that he was a main character or like a prominent character because it says he was on it from 2005 to 2013. Um, he was Sonny on the TV show SEAL Team, which is from 2017 to present. Uh, he was Ed on Supernatural, which ran from 2006 to 2014 in that, in that role. So it seems like he, uh, he did some did stuff. Some stuff. Yeah. He was uh, the voice of someone in The Good Dinosaur, which is a Pixar movie. Um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, it seems, I mean they're paying it seems, the bills. It seems, yeah, it seems like he's, you know, had a couple TV shows that he's he's been on and stuff. Um, would love for some someone to interview him and ask him about this movie. All right, we'll um, we'll hit him up after this. Yeah, I don't know. I meant, I meant like a real interviewer. Um, all right. So, and last thing, and, and a segment uh, shamelessly ripped off from How Did This Get Made? I'm going to read some reviews of this movie. Uh, I I went and filtered by the oldest reviews, so like the freshest in their mind, like in the movie theater. This one is September 29th. Okay, the, I think it's the day after yes, it came out, yeah. less than a month after 9-11. Was that in a theater or is that in a church? That's- uh, unsure. Uh, this says, uh, it's it's a 10 out of, this is on imdb.com, okay. 10 out of 10. Just plain awesome. I have to say, this is one of the best movies I've saw in years. <laughs> sure, I liked a lot of movies, but as far as calling it a great film, no. <laughs> but this is a great movie. I I have to see it again. If you haven't seen it, turn off your computer and go see it now. <laughs> that was back in the days before you could watch movies yeah. on your computer. <laughs> yeah, don't watch and, this on a computer. And, yeah, don't watch this on your computer because in 10 years it'll be on YouTube. All right, let's see. Okay. Um, life's a trip and so is this movie. 10 out of 10, September 29th, 2001. 
funny movie. The blue, <laughs> the blue flame scene is worth the price of admission alone. Great storyline about life's difficult moments. Also, the... And it ends the sentence there. Who knows? Also, the... Uh, it says, The X Games style sports scenes were amazing. If you like grocery store NASCAR, see this movie. <laughs> it's if you like, like going it's... on road trips, see this movie. If you like pickled eggs, see this movie. Is if that you, really what it, it says? I, I believe that person has misinterpreted the sourdough starter as pickled eggs. <laughs> and there is, I forgot to mention this. There is a scene where Matt like sticks his hand into this thing and like pulls out like the yeast or whatever and eats it. Um, <laughs> And then it says, if you just want to laugh and, and feel good, see this movie. Um, all right, let's see. I like how the reviews are referencing like yeah. life's hard moments. Like really that was not the takeaway that I got out of Extreme Days. It's like they read the title and was like, oh yeah, this is going to be a heart wrencher about, about things that we've dealt with okay. in the past. But there wasn't yeah. even anything like remotely hard. It was off screen. It was like, oh yes, our sister Ashley died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, we think about I mean, her yeah, every once yeah. in a while. All right, so this one, 10 out of 10. Title is, I love this movie. Also September 29th, 2001. Remember, 9-11, fresh in our memories. Toby Keith hasn't even written <laughs> written his, his songs about America yet. The God Bless the USA is playing 24-7 on every radio station. This guy says, Extreme Days, my new favorite movie of all time. This movie was extremely hilarious. <laughs> it's nonstop laughter from Matt, who, uh, actor whose name is Derek Hamilton, the crazy one, who's not all that bad looking either. All right, he's hot. <laughs> anyway, I just love this movie. The plot is great. The scenes are hilarious. There's a cameo by the Christian band Pax 217. Great surfing, skateboarding, and, and snowboarding clips. The beginning of the movie totally catches you off guard. I totally give this movie a 10 out of 10 stars because it kept me interested and entertained the whole way through. I guarantee that you will like it. That's from Hardy Fan Too Extreme. <laughs> um, let's see. All right, I'm going to skip down. Now, this one is September 30th, 2001. This is a 6 out of 10. Okay. <laughs> Extravagant. Extreme Days is surefire entertainment, stacked with loads of laughter, fun, and excitement. It is a must-see for any fan of extreme sports. That was the title. All oh, that, that was the title. Was the title. Yeah. Oh, man, Extravagant. This is gonna be, this is gonna yeah. be worried. Okay, here's the the body of the. Oh man, I gotta Someone, open this up. Someone needs to work on their headline writing skills okay. because that is not <laughs> journalistic okay. style. Yeah, I could have just said extravagant and then right. done. The, okay, so here it is. For anyone who intends to, but hasn't yet seen this film, you're in for a real treat. The movie is great. When I first saw the trailer for the film, I thought, this is fantastic. It's about time someone made a Christian movie about young people doing amazing things in extreme sports. I just thought that was so cool. And I would say to myself, finally, people are going to learn, seeing with their own eyes, what it truly means to live life to the fullest, realizing just how extreme Christianity is. Now that I've seen the movie, I'm thinking that I may have been right all along. People who aren't Christians are going to see this movie, come out of the theater with their minds broadened, having learned that there are things in this world worth living for, and that there is absolutely no reason why anyone should feel that their life is so terrible that the only way out is death. At least that's what I'm hoping people will get from seeing this movie. In any case, I highly recommend this film to people of all ages, especially those who enjoy watching young people take part in extreme sports such as motorcycling, surfing, and snowboarding. Now, this person gave this movie a 6 out of 10, but also wrote that review. So I just have this terrible visual of yeah. someone just like down at the bottom of whiskey bottles everywhere strewn all over their house. And they're like, you know what would cheer me up? Christianity and its extremeness, and the the, oh the just the the fact that they just reference like 
Yeah. Death. Yeah. Like, no, like, 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 hopefully no one will co- <laughs> people will be convinced not to commit suicide after right. seeing uh, extreme watching days. us light farts on fire and snowboard hey, for half That guy like said that that was worth the price of admission alone. It was. Um, all right. So I think this will be the last one because okay. uh, I haven't looked through all these. This is October 2nd, 2001. Okay. So it's the at the time to sit. Yes. So this title says, Definite Sleeper of the Fall. <laughs> It says, Extreme Days is the first Hollywood, in quotes, um, movie with a Christian message and soundtrack. Uh, it says, Is all starts as we catch up with the main characters' lives. Four guys who grew up together, good times, family, and the dream. To go across California to surf, skate, and generally risk every bone in their body having fun. Um Of course, this wouldn't be enough to make a whole movie, so we also have to have a love story. I cried at the end. Not! (laughs) This is 2001. Not jokes were great. Um, Does it really say that? It says not. Oh, my God. Uh, And general foolishness with paintball wars, extreme shopping, campsite karate, and a friendly game of spoons. Trust me, I laughed through it all. Go see this film now. Now that's what I call hits. <laughs> now since, that's what I call extreme. Since there was only seven people at the theater when I saw it, I don't see it holding on for too long. And it is one good flick. <laughs> he had this little roast in there. That was a Jesse Tear roast movie. <laughs> <laughs> what, was the, what was the rating? Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. <laughs> So you think oh to yourself, God. it's like you, you're spread out like <laughs> corner to corner. Oh my god. You gosh. got four quarters and maybe three people in yeah. the middle. Oh my gosh. And bad. I don't see this holding on. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. And he had to get quickly to his dial up internet connection to, <laughs> yeah. to post let, this let on IMDb know. to let the people yeah. know. It's not going to hold on, but you yeah. need to see it. <laughs> Uh, all right, that's oh, all I had. That's if you want to I, wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up with just this. The plot keywords here. Oh yeah, I forgot. Are, the it, plot keywords it, yeah. are excellent. The plot keywords on IMDb are on the road, inheritance, friend, buddy, lighting a fart. Tagline: Life's a trip. I really think that sums up the movie pretty well. If you have comments on this, if you know anyone who worked on the movie, if you have any connections to... Also, if you've listened to this podcast at all, leave us a comment. Let us know you watched it. Yeah, and uh, I was going to plug the socials. Do it, do it, do it. Youth group reunion tour at gmail.com. If you have questions or, or you know, you have suggestions for topics. Questions, comments, concerns, smart remarks. Instagram. Yeah. We are at youth group reunion tour. And on Twitter, at YG, Reunion Tour. And um, I think that's it then. So, yeah, definitely, um, if you can, leave us leave us a review uh, to drive up so that other people might see it. If you like it, share it with some people you went to youth group with. Yeah. Uh, let, leave us a comment or a like. Let us know you watched it. In the meantime, we'll be in Alaska. <laughs> On our way home to Alaska. (laughs) (laughs) On our way home to Alaska. See See you later, everyone.